Yo, 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 we back, we back, we back Episode 40, episode 40, man, milestone, milestone episode Ladies Free Podcast, I am your host, Tone with my brother JP, <laughs> what's and, up, man? <laughs> yeah, I just realized, damn, I kind of shot you down when you asked me if you want to do something for this 40th episode. I, I thought I didn't know that it was a thing to do, but then I said we can do something, but you never said nothing. No, like, okay, uh, well, them hosts probably got shot. Yeah, I was, I was cool. I, it wasn't. I said we can do 50. 50 is cool. We can, we can always, you know, get into 50. Right, it's, it's most definitely a milestone, though. Like, so, I mean, by not even, yeah, it's 40 full episodes, but having, oh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of seeing things we got out there so far. Like, a couple hundred videos. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Mm-hmm. I think it might be somebody told me it was 200 plus. Somebody told me it was 220 something. That was like over a month ago. So mm-hmm. I, yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> we definitely up there. So man, that's what's up, brother. Yeah, man. So check us out. Check us out. Um, streaming. Check us out. Uh, YouTube. Check us out wherever. We you sound like Magic Johnson <laughs> talking. <laughs> Throw that ball because because <laughs> in the off season we gonna get Dame. It's Dame time, baby. <laughs> you know what the Lakers gonna do, baby? Dame is on the way. <laughs> Ladies free pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we need to talk about too. But uh yeah, shout out to everybody. First and foremost, let me thank my super, super duper sponsor, um and partners, uh Mayor Roth Group and uh Antoine Pope, man. Thanks to them, man. Shout out to you, brother. Us. And also we got some you know, we're gonna talk to him later on in this episode, man, just to chop it up with him, you know, just to see what's going on. He's a longtime partner and friend of the show as well. Mm-hmm. So we definitely gonna talk to him, just see what's on his mind, man. I know he's he's moving right now. Uh, not moving literally, but I mean he's on the road. So doing a little bit of what we do, man. So you know, just seeing that road, seeing that road, man. So he on the run or something? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you almost said yeah. Almost said yeah, because that's our <laughs> slang when we talk. You on the run? You know, so I was about to say yeah, but nah, he's just out. Um, he's actually doing some uh, work, diving into another field. So, mm. so yeah, he's moving around. So shout out to him, man. Shout out to everybody, Facebook group, and everybody who rock with us streaming. Shout um, out to the drink. Everything, man. Just thanks to everybody, man. Um, shout out to the new. Uh, TikTok people, man, that's um, been rocking with us. Hey, we've been low key. Hey, we, we've been getting some hits on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to them, man. Thanks for uh, following us. Thanks for rocking with your boys. Like I said last week, man, y'all could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that, man. How's it going for you? If I'm, you know, what's going good for me? Just because I know that you can be old and still have a TikTok. <laughs> you know, TikTok seems like my, I guess a young thing. You know what I'm saying? It definitely. You do. got a 50 year old and a 30, a 29 year old guy. On the TikTok, putting our content out, and we we, we doing pretty good. They like it. My else me, huh? My Chuck ain't here no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I put a couple years on to you. Forty seven, <laughs> but nah, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, all those aside, man, I'm I'm doing great, man. Doing great. Um, it's been a more so of a positive week for me. You know what I'm saying? Just everything, work, uh, everything. I, uh, it's funny. I looked at myself in the mirror yesterday and said, damn, you ugly. <laughs> That's why I'm like, bro, I got to get a haircut. So he, yeah, he went hooking up for me with, uh, doing this podcast today. Bro, I'm telling you, like, that shit changes you. You do, it. Like, you always hear, but then when it actually happens to you, like your whole, yeah. like your whole swag your thing. Swag is, is off the rack, <laughs> man. Because I felt so bummy. Hey, I'm <laughs> telling you, these days a, a nice shave will get it for me. I'm talking about yeah. you get shaved, you feel totally different. You looking different. You're like, man, I just took off about five years. You're like, okay, <laughs> we walk out the bathroom different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got your swag going, but yeah, man, I feel you. I couldn't, I couldn't let you do it. I, 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 I feel like a chick with a new wig. Hey, I feel them. I feel them now. They be like, mm-hmm. I want to go out there like this. I don't even want to go to Walmart, and you know that's my spot. I was about to get it in. 
Oh my god! <laughs> Somebody got on me about that last week. But <laughs> boy, just yeah. imagine if you would have shaved before you went out there in them biker shorts. Ooh, <laughs> a fresh shave, cut, and biker shorts. Oh, that's a combo meal. That's a number seven right there. <laughs> I'm winning. I ain't gonna call you a combo meal when you go to jail too. <laughs> to <a shit. laughs> I almost say <said>, yeah. <laughs> no, I ain't being no snack. Be nasty. <laughs> Y'all nasty in there, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> Heck no. Oh man, what are we getting into today, man? We got some good stuff on the horizon, man. But let's let's get into these sports since you started out talking about uh Dame and the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Real quick, um, it was some turmoil this first few games of the um, the Olympics, mm-hmm. um, and the question came across when it all boils down. Okay, we we know the Olympic squad and whatnot, but they lost the first two games, exhibition uh, games, yeah. exhibition games at that. So when if you're going to lose, that's when you want to lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're getting it together. It's a new team, but oh, I'm sorry, so, but the passed by all of that. The question that was asked is do you think KD can lead um the Olympic team to gold? You know, you, you know what what uh, my answer to that is why does it have to be just KD? Why is it yeah. I mean, I'm getting wrong like, you know, fans can sit here and pin something on a player, you know what I'm saying? Cuz they even put it at, at like, oh, y'all so-called new Best player of all time got beat in the in the, in the finals and whatever uh, against the Bucks. Like, why? Like, you you got a team full of of, of, of superstars. Yeah. You, you said you got Dame. You got I, mean, I don't even know the full roster, but you got a lot of other stars. And I said, granted, this is a newer team as far as and it's a younger team because you got a lot of vets that is not even um, playing mm-hmm. in, in the Olympics. But yeah, I'm mean, like. Why, why does it have to be solely KD? You know, right. um, of course, they they have a reputation that they've, come on, man, <laughs> we dominate the Olympics to the yeah. point where, I mean, even when they was asking Pop, like, Pop kind of got a little salty about it. Like, they was asking, like, man, y'all used to blowing our teams. What's going on? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I mean, I don't even want it to... Get to that because that's what they already got to deal with on an everyday basis. You, you, y'all are stars from y'all team. Like y'all come together as a team and, and beat these cats. These cats plot on different ways to beat y'all every, every time the Olympics come around. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, these boys showing that they ain't. Hey, yeah, they, they matter, ain't playing. It's a matter of evolving. The yeah. world is evolving. Everybody ain't trash in basketball no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why we draft a lot of players from overseas. I, I almost wanted to question shit. I mean, Pop is a great coach, but. He ain't been having two last like, what three years now. Yeah. He, he ain't he ain't been l- 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 looking too good from as far as coaching wise. You know, the, so I mean, just to put him in that space, and especially with a newer team that might struggle. I mean, he's showing with his response like he's taking it more personal than actually responding as a coach to me. Funny thing about it is, I I was never worried. I think the media blew this up and made more, oh, more yeah. about it than it it really should have been. Like. Who cares they lost the exhibition game? Yeah, <laughs> Who cares they lost the second one? But mm-hmm. I do think... But the, the way they lose Yeah, it, and, and I do think that, like I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. You know what I mean? And there is some... There's definitely some some issues. You know what I mean? The way that this team is built, first and foremost, let's just be clear on that. And then on top of that, you got to think about <clears throat> three of your heavy hitters are also still playing. So you don't have Giannis. Um, I think... Chris Middleton, uh, Devin Booker. I think, they I think all, all three of them would have been, been playing. Too. Yeah, they would have been in the Olympics. So that right there alone would have solidified. They don't really have a rim protector. Bro, they, they got Hassan Whiteside out there, don't they? No. I swear I thought Did I saw him out there. <laughs> I swear, bro, this, this is where I saw like I know JaVale is going now. To I, 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 I think I saw her, her sign out there, but I think. Oh, maybe. I it think, it, it, and I, I don't want to, but it seemed like. More and more players, especially the stars that's getting older, they don't want to participate in it because especially they feel like they done already solidified themselves with the Olympics. So now someone's like, we're not even because we we still got a bunch of stars that's sitting at home that could be be helping the team out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm looking at it like that. I saw a list like, man, no, bring Steph Curry out, or you know what I'm saying. You got 
I don't know if Gobert is out there. Is he? So I so said, you got cats that's has gotten older. So now it's like, okay, well, I'm almost like you want to leave it to the next generation of players. But yeah, man, like yeah. And see, this is what besides Bam, they have no rim protection. You got Bam out of Bayou, Bradley Beal who just left and being replaced now by I think Javale McGee. Why Beal is uh, COVID uh, protocols, something like that. That's another thing. Health too. and safety, yeah. Um, Devin Booker, who's still playing. Javel Kevin. McGee. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, they, they struggling, bro. Yeah, I know. I love Javel McGee and the impact he's been bringing, like, but like, I, with I, the Lakers. But I said the same yeah, thing. They struggling so. in, in, in the big uh, part. Yeah, Kevin Durant, Jeremy Grant, Draymond Green, Drew Holiday, uh, Keldon Johnson from the Spurs, but I don't know what happened with Drew him. Holiday? Yeah. Who was supposed to be playing, but he's not because he's still in the finals right now. I was about to say, hold on, how the fuck you Oh, so this is the Yeah, oh, this, this is the okay. original roster. Uh Zach Levine, Damian Lillard, Kevin Love, who also just withdrew. Um, mm. JaVel McGee now. Um is a replacement. Keldon Johnson and JaVel McGee are the replacements that have came in for Kevin Love and um, I swear I thought I saw Hassan Whiteside out there. Bradley Beal, Chris Middleton, who's still playing. Mm -hmm. And then you got Jason Tatum. Bro, they they think about it. Jason Tatum. Um, um, let me show. Let me look at this list, bro. Because they still have great great stars. Oh on yeah, the they team. got talent. They got talent. Jason Tatum, uh, Zach Levine, Dane. Know what I'm saying? Like, is, is Draymond out there? Yeah, Draymond out there. Yep, got Draymond. I got a lot of respect for Draymond, man. Go out there and represent, man. Steph should have brought his ass out there. He ain't doing shit else. <laughs> yeah, he is getting ready to make that championship. Man, that boy probably out there, what, in golfing? You know, he be doing that. that, that he be hosting show. that little. He got, yeah, he got his own <laughs> show. He got, Steph got a lot going on, man. He can't be running around hey. here wasting. They didn't gave a lot of years. Now, shout out to, a, you know, a lot of the vets. I mean, you, me and you talked about that before. More. Like a lot of vets that we knew was gonna pull out and wasn't gone. But that's the thing. Like, I, that's why I think that's. I mean, th it's going to show the weakness in the Olympics because now a lot of them players is not gonna be playing anymore. So now it's almost like a transition period. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? The Stephs, the Lebrons, the. You know what I'm saying? Like I said you. You even got like James Harden. Oh, even though well, he, well he, he's not 100. percent You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you, 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 you still got a lot of top tier players. Like I said, Gobert. Um, Donovan Mitchell, like all, it's a lot of other players that I mean that could easily be on to, that can help in that team. That either, but I think about it too, like it's still rather anybody want to uh, believe it or not, it's still a virus out here. So yeah. people still take it serious. So they just had the first confirmed case in Tokyo. Um, right. So you know what I'm saying. So it's already one morning. thing going out here and competing uh, in the United States as far as. Playing basketball, but after that, you want me to go overseas and risk that, and I got like my family and all that stuff. So yeah, so I just think dealing with that, and then just like I said, just the whole. I think this is like a transition period, almost handing it off to the younger stars and all that. So it's it's gonna show this year, you know what I'm saying? As far as can these cats work together? Because I mean, it's still a lot of great talent on that team. Yeah, and I got sidetracked, you know, just announcing the team. But to answer your question, because you asked a question. Mm -hmm. Um, about why is it even coming down to can KD take him? You know, take KD, KD says something. But I, I, I think it's a valid question because there's always one leader, and when you become the so, so-called, or the the proclaimed best player in the world, so to speak, they're always going to put that on your back. They did it with Jordan. They did it with LeBron. They, you know, so they're going to do it with KD. But even when they went to the Olympics. He had LeBron, Carmelo, yes, D Wade, all. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, all this. So, so it wasn't like okay, even though at that point LeBron, you know what I'm saying, the best player, bro. He he wasn't looked at like okay when we lost. Oh, it is it, uh well, why didn't LeBron like you? You had them, but stuff. you know that pressure was coming back to him. The minute they lost, it was LeBron and and the and the guys couldn't get it done. He was gonna take a majority. It's always like that with the star. Man, don't call me no the guys. The star gonna take you, you call LeBron that shit on his own team. We playing for the for our country. I, I I'm yeah. a star coming from my team. 
I respect him as a player, Absolutely. but Absolutely. Don't, 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 don't call don't call me the temptation. But when you the face of the league, that's that's what it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. LeBron and the I'm, Olympic I'm, team. K yeah. D and the Olympic team. That's how they go. Oh, Jordan and the Olympic team. And we know it's other greats, but well, that's I mean, they they're saying KD and the Olympic team because KD is the best player on on that team right now. And same thing with LeBron. LeBron was the the best player at that point, and and the face of the league, and then Jordan when they had the Olympic team, you know, and so on. It's that's what they're gonna do. That's why I said I. It's a valid question because they're always gonna spin it like that, no matter how how good the team, good or bad the team is. If they lose, you know who's gonna get the blame, and then, you know people can't wait to to throw that at KD after he became the so called best player in in the world, which I think KD has been the best player in the league for the last few years, like right before he got hurt. Mm-hmm. He's run with Golden State, so my thoughts on it is that that's, that's normal. I, I don't think nothing. I don't take nothing from it. You know, uh, it, it's nothing to me. I mean, I knew they were going to do that. That's just what they do with the player who's the face of the league or the best player in the league at that time. They're always going to get the the you know all the criticism. You know, they're going to get all the accolades and they they're going to get all the credit and they're also going to get all the blame when you know when something goes wrong. So I just honestly think that I mean. <laughs> I just think that it's players that's not out there that could be out there. Oh, help them! You know what I'm yeah. saying? But you know that's that's the thing that's their right, and for whatever reason, and I get it though. I'm not knocking nobody who don't want to go to the Olympics this year, especially with all that's been going on, and you know the bubble and the, the like. You said the virus is still out here, so hey, I ain't knocking nobody for for not going. So let me just shout out to all them brothers for you know going over there still playing. <laughs> Even even KD in this you know this instance because I didn't especially coming off the injury playing the full season I didn't think he was gonna be uh, quick to you know what I'm saying go over there and play in the Olympics but shout out to them man but KD and Hoover oh yeah that there's something I want to talk to you about this book that's coming out with the beat reporter that um that got close to the situation over there and he talked about what's going on and he's releasing a lot of you, stuff. I'm going to get close to his yeah. hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the one thing I don't think he addressed. But yeah, we definitely want to, um, I want to chop it up with you about that but we get some more details on the book. I think so, he just so released he it. also, KD has, has a book coming out. No, the uh, Beat Reporter and he's explaining a lot of the stuff that Kyrie's doing, a lot of stuff that KD doing and who's, just, and who, who, who's this Beat Reporter? Uh, I forgot his name. Um, Somebody that has been I forgot his name. I, working with them, or yeah, he was he was the beat reporter for the Nets last like the last couple of years, and you know what I'm saying he was so close to him, like he was going to the clubs that they were at, he was going to dinner with them. He so was, my question is, what is a beat reporter? That, that's what I'm getting confused. Oh, basically, on. a beat reporter is the reporter who's always there with the team. He reports. Okay, on that. okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about team. about music. And they oh, talking about no, no. So I was like, beat reporter no, right? no. is that a different time? Oh yeah, no. You know, you got the beat reporter, beat writers, and. They pretty much uh, do okay. everything with that team. So oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you see it in a, a lot of the, the, the documentaries mm-hmm. when they talk about certain players. Yeah, that, then you got like the reporters yep, uh, of that time. There. Yeah, yep, exactly. Okay. And he just took it, and you know, he took everything that was going on with the organization. You, organization, you gonna see some stuff in there. Like he was saying how like the organization is scared of like KD and Kyrie, and they're like if they'll buy one of they like the players will have the organization buy the girlfriends a house. For the weekend and this is that like and they'll do it like it's crazy to see the stuff that goes on behind the scenes but yeah that's something i want to talk to you about but i'm gonna get you to um we'll get the book and we'll look over it so we have you know something to go into on that but mm-hmm. once again let me just take a quick intermission to let you know you are rocking with the ladies free podcast home home gang, 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 gang. yes sir so we are back man you know have to give y'all that little intro we have to remind y'all where y'all I say at, where we go <laughs> 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 Had to remind y'all what y'all that sometimes who y'all rock it with. But yeah, talking about KD, um, let me just give a quick shout out to oh, I need an air horn for her. It's my my low key. My low key boo. Um Candace Parker. Mm. Candace Parker. I know you seen that. Uh it's gonna be the first woman to grace the cover of uh NBA two K. Oh yeah. Or she's gonna be the first woman to grace the cover of any game, if I'm not mistaken. Excuse me, right? I don't remember ever seeing a uh, female well, on them. Well, I, well, yeah, I, it, it might be. So I don't want to make that statement. I just know of yeah. any two K game. Yeah, because you know they just recently got females on. The yeah, games. last last year, year, year before. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so shout out to Candice. Yeah. Candice needs a round of applause. Shout out to Candice. Hey, Candice for 
representing the the hometown out there mm-hmm. playing in Chicago. Shout out to you uh, for shout out to you and April and making this cover. Shout out to everybody else that made the covers. Um, from Katie to um, Dirt and Whiskey to uh, I think Kareem to um, Luca. Is it Luca? Luca on there too? Yeah, he, he's the face cover. Oh, so they didn't. Up? So they didn't give it to the MVP, but did it, you know get given to Luca. So they got like three different versions. So KD, Dirt, and Kareem is all on like an anniversary version. Mm-hmm. Candace Parker is on one version, and then Luca is on like the oh. yeah. That's what's up, man. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Shout out to them, man. Round of applause for Luca. Hey, everybody, man. That's on the cover of that, man. Would you tell uh, me, me and Chuck? <laughs> that's <laughs> go great. Ahead. Y'all go ahead and get it for me. <laughs> well, 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 which one you mind? <laughs> None until y'all tip. Man, you gotta, oh, you y'all gotta support tip. Candace, man. I support Candace every day, all day. I <laughs> love her. Candace, I love you, but I cannot support 2K no more until oh, I no. know what I'm getting. I'm yeah. saying this on the podcast. I feel you. They've had my blind support for years. I don't even question dropping my 60 to to $100. Yeah, what I say. And, and they got us last time just because of the whole thing with Kobe passing. So of oh, course yeah. everybody's gonna drop that honey. Dropped it. Let me get that. VC. Yeah. Kobe. Y'all. Give me that. Give yeah. me that. You dropped it by one fifty. Easy. Yeah. Oh yeah, because <laughs> you, you had issues with your. Yeah. yeah. Had to go back. Y'all still owe me. Oh, <laughs> so definitely gonna blast on this podcast. But until y'all tell me on this podcast that it's great and it's worth me getting, or I can check it out. Other than that, I'm good. I'll take a picture of Candace and put it on on my shirt or something. We got fi- 54 more days. Yeah, we're going to see. I ain't been counting. See. Somebody been counting. <laughs> I can't wait for fantasy. I'm, I know that's fantasy coming Fantasy football, up yeah. yeah. So that is coming yes, up. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely shout out to Candace. We definitely had to mention that. Man, you know what? Um, let's get this out of the way because this is something fresh and new. Rest in peace to the legend, Biz Markey, mm. man. Is Marquis, man. Mr. Rest in peace to. Oh, baby, you. Right. Hit it, bro. Okay. It's, just, it's just so crazy because, well, for the last couple weeks, they are, when he was like real best bad, like they was killing them off already. And then they had it, his team or his family had to come back and say, like, he's okay, but he's. Let me tell you something that I learned about that. And, and what do you think that was? Confirmed and non confirmed. <laughs> when you see that happen, is normally a reason and i think the reason is the family had already al- allowed him to to pass on and transition they and just wanted they to want, put it out there yeah yet, because they wanted to take that their time to somebody to else bring back they wanted to take their time somebody else reaching too to get their grieving yeah. and you know their processing of things and their ceremonies and whatever they had to do DMX. let the family do it DMX. They, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was the case. I don't think they waited as long. No, it was only like a day. DM, yeah. yeah, you know, let the family get theirs out. But yeah, this happened. Um, this happens all the time with celebrities. So, and I mean, that's rightfully so. I would do the same thing. You know, uh, allow us as a family to do what we need to do and to process this thing because we know it's about to be. A, and, and most of it's positive support, but it's still hard to receive. Sometimes you just don't want to hear nothing. But why has always got to be at least one? Like that, the ceiling, that, that shit always gets out. Yeah. Everybody yep. always want to have that, that first story. Yep. Everybody. So quick to be first. Yeah. We talk about that all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I didn't, I said, didn't have too much. Like, just rest in peace, King. I think he was 57 years old. Yeah. I mean, legend. <laughs> He's all, he was always like an entertainment, a, 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 Funny and entertaining me growing up. I always seen like when I seen him on TV. I mean, it's just uh, we're losing a lot of a lot of legends, man. Yeah. A lot of a lot of legends. You just l- l- look at the list just in the entertainment business. Whether you singing, songwriting, rapping, like we lost a lot just in our lifetime. Like man, so yeah, man. that's true, man. And we keep on losing legends, man. But it's amazing to see how many lives that that brother touched. When I went down my timeline. Yesterday, mm-hmm. when when I tell you the pictures that I seen with people that I did, like I'm of course I'm not in industry, but I'm like looking at these people like I didn't even know he knew him, and then looking at the stories like people like you gave me my first album, you showed me how to do this, you showed me how to format that, you know, just just somebody genuine, just always giving. That's the key, man, in life. Like if you're not giving out 
information. And I get it. Everything can't be free. Mm -hmm. But you can give a lot of game and knowledge and drop gems on people for free. And that's what Bismarck did. And you drop enough for them and you're going to get what, you know, the money's going to come. You know, mm -hmm. especially when you solidify. So just seeing that, man, it made it made me smile, and it just also made me shake my head. Like I'm, I'm. Let me tell you, I'm not dealing with death the greatest these days. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I thought I was pretty good at it beforehand, but so just seeing this just made me shake my head. Then also after I scrolled down my timeline for about thirty seconds, it made me turn my phone off. You know, so after a while, I can only see so much. But shout out to that legend, man. May you rest in heaven, brother. Rest in paradise and yeah. never forgotten, man. Never forgotten. Legend. Yeah, just like how you were saying, like, man, so when you just, well, just not even realizing how you're feeling. And then they like, say, you get on your phone and you see that's just like this past Wednesday when they had the service for Uncle Ken. Like, I almost slipped my mind. And then, you know, you get on there and then you see the family back home posting about it. It was like, oh, man. Just got, like, Man, yeah. that feeling like, man, like, I, I'm still dealing with this, even though you try to do so much to try to keep your mind off of, you know. Yeah, that's a fact. And you know what? We had a rest in, rest in paradise and rest in heaven, King. Uncle King, rest in, rest in heaven to you, man. You know, we haven't given you your applause. I mean, we've given to you in real life, but here on this podcast, man, you deserve it. Just because it's over, don't mean it's over. You know what I mean? So. I sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, get into this on, on the podcast. You know, yeah. we normally try to keep the the sad moments to a minimum. But no, yeah, I mean, yeah, because I mean, it I, it's just so funny. Cause now I'm starting to, all right, well, last week, so I, I've been the stuff, the stuff, been popping up in my head that just this little stuff I didn't even realize I got from them. Like I was uh that that chicken spot that uh you had put me on Frenchies, mm -hmm. the one that got the greens. He put me on putting hot sauce on on, on the greens. <laughs> it was a down south thing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just keep remember every time I think about him, him calling me Big, Big Jack. Jack. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was one of the only ones in the family outside outside of our core family that was actually able to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go, go to the house and go and go get Doja. You know, everybody yeah. used to be scared of him. Yeah, you know? it's a fact. And he, he go, go get him, walk him like just just little stuff like that, man. Like, hey, it, it's, yeah. you most definitely will be missed, man. Like, it's all good memories, you know. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. Shout out to them, man. Shout out to Biz Marky. Shout out to Uncle Ken. Shout out to everybody, man. And I said something last week, and I felt like when I watched the podcast back, I felt like it's something that I might need to say more often, man. And um, let me just give a round of applause to all those people who are not having the greatest of weeks, you know, and sometimes that is absolutely us as well. But shout out to them because I need you to know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, things are... Things are going to go up and down for everybody, man. So we always come on here and we shout out everybody who's having a great week. And But shout out to the people who are not having a good week, man. And just know that things will get better. Time is your friend. You know what I mean? Time waits for no one, but time is your friend. Things will change. Things will get better as long as you're doing your part. So shout out to y'all, man. You're not forgotten. We, we, we shout out today? Let's do it. You <laughs> we ain't had one of no episodes in a while. <laughs> shout out to Diddy Love. Shout out, hey, shout out to Diddy Love, man. <laughs> You need hey. some dance music? You know, take that, take that. Did you hear the little, little inside about his parties? I heard a lot of stuff about his parties, but I don't well, know. You know that he, they just recently had like a little party. Uh, I think it was around the four. Um, they they be getting down at his parties. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's like no cell phones, no none of that. Absolutely. Like, they, they get down. Like, I, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I was like, like everything is off limits. Box. I was like, oh, shit. How you get an invitation? But I'm sitting there looking at, I didn't know if it was this last party, but now I got me looking at who, who was at that party. They had Lil Baby and all these celebrities. I'm like, okay. I'm still like, well, I don't know. Yeah, what? I've heard the same things. I've heard it goes down. <laughs> I'm talking about cats. And, I, I don't know. I, I, that's, just, that's just what I heard, but yeah. I mean, did he love? Like, I mean, yeah, you got to fill us in on what's going on, man. I, I know you. Know what I'm saying? You on a whole nother level as far as your freakiness. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I <laughs> shout out to Diddy Love, man. Shout out to Diddy. Man. Hey, let me. <laughs> <laughs> let me spin that record back. <laughs> let me. It's oh, on. I can't give him too much props because old girl gonna come for me. Oh yeah, you're right. 
Uh, Jaguar. Mm-hmm. I've heard nothing. Jaguar, do something, man, so we can talk about you. <laughs> hey, you know what? This new Jaguar videos yeah. shit different. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is something off the cuff that we we didn't. Um, yeah, I hadn't talked to you about it, but mm-hmm. what do you think about the um, the Joe Button transition? And there's a lot of people that you know what I'm saying has followed our podcast for a while, and then you know back a couple months ago when we was talking about it, I, I kind of did the math in my head. And we were on point <laughs> with everything, every video that we dropped. So if you mm-hmm. want to go back and look, we were on point with even even shout out to one of the um, YouTube subscribers that who said y'all was a little too early on this one when we said this is the new Joe Button podcast. Mm-hmm. And we said that on the video and we put Maul, I mean, not Maul, we put Joe Ish and Ice up there. Yep. And said this is the new And, and then uh, that's when Rory Maul came they back came and he was back. like, oh, y'all was a little too soon. <laughs> yeah. And came back for like, what, a week? <laughs> yeah. A week, two weeks. Yeah. Yep. A few episodes and we could tell that the chemistry wasn't there and, and quickly things deteriorate. I could tell I couldn't really read. I could read Rory a little bit, but I could read Maul like a book. Oh, hell yeah. Because Maul is one of them dudes that he's uncomfortable being in a shady situation. Mm-hmm. And if he don't feel like you're loyal to him, then then Maul shows it. He, he has trouble hiding. I feel like I'm like that. I, and, 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 and I love cats like that because even some of what he was saying as far as just how, like, how, how he moved, yeah, as far as like that, that's just like some real shit. But as far as just comparing some of the stuff he was saying, so as far as business wise, and you know what I'm saying, you, uh, I, I questioned a few things, but I understood where he was coming from. Right. If if, if, if it gets to the point where I gotta do anything different as far as me keeping it real, just for a bag, man, fuck that bag. Yeah. I like him keeping it real to to, to that extent. So I mean, I'm uh, your question was. My question basically is looking at at it now and with Joe saying some of the things that he's saying and we've seen that he's, you know, lost a uh, cash app deal um, mm-hmm. sponsorship and let me drop a little bit and the numbers, you know, I got something to say. Um, For one, I think and Joe Budden is a, is a smart guy. I believe he's a he 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 he's mastered his crap. Mm hmm. And when I say he mastered his craft, I'm talking about the craft of talking and getting people to listen. He he knows how to choose his words right to the point. But I think one thing I'm I'm not and I don't, I don't think anybody has even touched on this point. But I think one mistake that he made with his rebrand in this podcast is putting that on another platform and making people pay for it. You can't sit here and put something on a platform that I don't even know what the fuck y'all are doing. This is a totally different group. It's a totally different group. So now I gotta pay to see something I don't even know. Like, yeah. I can see. So, Rory I, and, 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 I, and I understand he was already making that transition with the Patreon app and all that, but with all this happening, are you doing that? I seen it. I'm like, okay, I think the numbers ain't gonna really be there because now you want people to pay to, to watch and listen to y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is a totally different group of people. And then even listening to him, uh, one of his latest videos when he had the clip and he was saying, and I said, I, I didn't disagree with nothing that he said. I mean, the shit was true. Like, for one, Rory Maul rebranded. And and it's not even they, because they even said, like, this might, we, we might change our name, but right now it's a, the new Rory Maul yeah. podcast. And the shit working. They able to still talk about the shit that they've been talking about because they they, they didn't do nothing but uh, but lose one co-host which was pretty much the main host mm-hmm. but it, it it opened up for Rory cuz you've seen the potential in Rory as far as actually being that host and it, it opened up for more as far as more to open up more which is what we all wanted but when he did he got bashed for it mm-hmm. so of course you got the support there and of course, their numbers is hitting. Their numbers is hitting automatically. Yeah, so now numbers. you compare that to, you know what I'm saying? And Joe brushed it up and made it sound real good. But he pretty much said, all in a nutshell, our numbers ain't there. Uh, we, You know what I'm saying? But I want you to come in here and talk about what you want to talk about. I'm going to figure this shit out. But I don't want you to feel like you got to come here and talk about shit that you don't know nothing about. He even, right. he even nicely called out uh, one of his dudes. I don't, I don't want you talking about no music if you ain't listening to nothing. Pretty much what he told him. 
Yeah, yeah. When he you said know what I'm saying? Track. So yeah, so yeah. that's that, that, that's my that's my look at it. I mean, it yeah. seemed like it's just yeah, and just, just that main point I wanted to point out as far as just putting your stuff on a platform where people got to pay for it, which at the same time you still rebrand it. So yeah, I get, you, I get it. You lose supporters that way, or or people's attention uh goes away. Well, I agree, but you know what? I think this started a little bit. I think this started a while before that. Oh yeah, yeah, before that. As yeah. far as not not that I'm saying lose supporters. I thought oh, okay. I think you're you're 100 right. I'm not disagreeing with mm -hmm. you. But what I'm saying is, I think Joe started losing supporters once people figured out the way he valued his friends. You know what I mean? And the business shouldn't have nothing to do with the product, but you can't. They they are what they are. Mm -hmm. They are you know they coincide. So you know what I'm saying? If if me and you are doing bad business, then it's so hard for us to come on here and to act like unless we're just good actors. There's a lot of people out there that are great actors. They they can do that. It's hard. Y'all motherfuckers for, see it in my face. Like, <laughs> yeah, us princes. I don't know if y'all remember seeing the white girl <laughs> like, here. She agreed on facial expressions. Yeah, like it, it, we can tell it all right you, in the face. You know, so it's like it started early on, but I think a lot of people are saying that a lot. I think a lot of people are shocked, including Joe. I think Joe is shocked. Of the number of people that went that way to support uh, Rory and Maul, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because he, Joe, I think Joe just got it in his mind at some point that his celebrity, like what? See, the thing is, his celebrity came from podcasting. Yeah, that's what I say. His celebrity hit late, it hit late, and it wasn't it, for it, music. It wasn't like, for the music. Yeah, he's out start, don't get me point. wrong. That's a good point. Yeah, don't get me wrong. He has a fan base for oh, yeah, his music. Definitely. I'm one of them. But that's a good point right there. Yeah, and he he rode the wave as if this is all me. This is my celebrity. I brought this in, mm -hmm. and I don't have no personal conversations. I'm just going off of what Marlon Rory has said and what he has said. Yeah, so it just Joe has, has said it plenty of yeah, times on there. You know, and you can tell by his bravado on the podcast. Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, take nothing away from him, but I just think that was a mistake that was made. And so now listening to him with Ice and Ish, and shout out to them and they're, what they're doing as mm -hmm. well, because Ice and Ish, to me, are the, are they're, they're the ones that are taking most of the, the, the punishment, if, if so to speak. And I mean, a lot of people like it, but I'm saying a lot of the negativity, a lot of the comments comes at them and they didn't do anything. It's just hey, that you're trying to fill shoes. Yeah, and and, and Joe brought it to their attention and he actually apologized to them. So I, I, I can get that to Joe and I'm gonna say get him out, but just let him know. Like, I understand what I brought y'all into and I apologize. Yeah. You. But I mean, it's here if y'all want it and they, they've been staying on there. So now you stay on here, so now... Yeah, Anything that comes after thing. that, you know, yeah, you got to take thing. So, yeah. So I'm with it. You know, I, I agree with that. But just listening to him talk about the rebrand and everything. I don't think nothing was said that was that was new. Nothing shocked me it, because you have to address this. So at this point, that becomes a part of content. You know, <laughs> the best content is being honest. So let me be honest and just say, shit, we were trying to figure it out. And that's what he said to me. And like you said, in a nutshell, I heard. Ish don't listen to music sometimes and threat, you know, and so we trying to figure it out, come here and talk to it. But we it's funny because we've been through this. You know what I'm saying? In mm -hmm. case y'all didn't know, we had a third member and and yeah. we, we tried to do the same thing. We say, hey, talk about, you know, what it is, you know, put in there what you want to talk about. Like we're not better than one another. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just because it may be something we're not well versed on. Right. Ooh, so let me get versed on or you educate me. Yeah. On. So then when you get to that point where Let's put it out there. And I believe we all had that freedom to, hey, you know what I'm saying? Because we all have a list. And we all have that freedom. Hey, put what you want to talk about on there. Even if you think that you might not get much out of it. If you got a good point on it. So when you're not getting that, and it's just a continuation thing, like, I mean, what do you do at that point? I mean, if we, we all just being real, and you can compare it to a job or anything, but if you got, if you're going into a thing three ways, and you're just not 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 getting it from that 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 third and for whatever reason. I mean, what do you have to do? Right. I mean, so I look at us like as far as and that's why I brought what's crazy. I actually brought this to your attention, even though you asked me, is because mm -hmm. I I kind of look at it as far as like by us, and I wanted to kind of ask you like, do you do you feel like we have to rebrand even though we lost a mm -hmm. co-host or not, or or do you think we kind of was a uh, will be able to adjust like how Rory Ma was but, and then just it just get better just to fill in that that third seat you know what I I don't think a rebrand was in order for us 
Mm. Number one, because this might sound crazy, but losing losing a brother on the podcast or losing a, a, a co-host on the podcast didn't change who we were. I think losing Rory and Ma changed who they were who, or changes what that podcast is now. Mm -hmm. So by Rory and Ma being gone, I think it changes the Joe Budden podcast. Yeah, it's a totally you know, different podcast. Totally different you know. podcast. Yeah. So I think by us, you know, losing Chuck and, you know, just being transparent, I mean, mm -hmm. not, he, you know, he know, everybody knows. I mean, yeah, sure. not, uh, yeah, yeah we, it wasn't nothing bad. Like, we still rock. talk to him. Yeah, shit. we still talk to him. Ain't nothing crazy like that, but him just not being on the podcast. But that, that's didn't different change. from us and Joe. Like, I mean, our, like, can they still sit here? I mean, I'm pretty sure they like, well, one day, but can Joe sit here and still call Rory Marlin and hey, we want to go hang yeah. out? Right, right. no, because it, it, you know, it's going yeah. it's that, that animosity that I think just it's like, damaged. Yeah, yeah, like, like we can call Chuck right now; <laughs> he'll pick up. Like we, you know, what I'm saying, but we can do that. Understand yeah. it in the way you've been doing it for a couple years. So I mean, it, it, yeah. it, we've been doing it for a year. So just imagine a couple more years added on to yeah, that. They've been doing it for five well, plus. Well, yeah, so you, know, so you know what I'm saying. So I mean, of course, it's gonna be feelings there yeah, or yeah. just some. But I think it's because it as, was, as it, men too, because like, it was a business separation, though. Yeah, it was a bad business separation. Yeah, instead of you know a separation where work and life comes into play yes. with you know happen so I don't want to compare us to them so it was totally different but yeah mm -hmm. I, I do as far as the rebranding question that's a completely valid question and I don't think so I don't think with um, Chuck being gone it changes what we are because we still our core is still there mm -hmm. you know still going to be at our core and and going into another conversation that because I talked to Chuck about this mm -hmm. and this is something I just wanted to mention and you know I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm hitting you with a lot of stuff off the cuff mm -hmm. but it's something that I, I, this might be a TikTok moment. I think we're going to have a TikTok moment every week, <laughs> you know, where we get into something. And there was something that I got into with Chuck and I, and I talked to him and I had to, I had to remember it because it was kind of, well, kind of profound moment where we was talking and I, and I was telling him like one of the hardest things. And I asked him, I said, bro, do you know what one of the hardest things in the world to do is that we never discuss? On a daily basis. What's that? Being happy. Sounds crazy, but being happy is one of the hardest things in the world to do okay. on a daily basis. Because the, the problem is like so I, I think so many people are unhappy because they're trying to because they're failing at trying to be happy. You know what I mean? And think about this goes on on a daily basis. And I think like you, you probably thinking like what? But what I'm saying is it's 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 so valid that we don't even think about it. Like we automatically put being happy for for a day. In the category of impossible. Automatically, you don't even think about it. There are some things that you walk out the door in the morning and you don't even think about because, you know, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're like, I, I know I'm not finna get here to there in 20 minutes when it's going to take me 30. You just know it's like impossible. So you don't think about it. And I think that's where we, we put being happy. Like, and, and a lot of times what we do is we deflect. Like our, our body has a natural mechanism where we're constantly deflecting and we don't even realize it. There's constant threats to our happiness all day long. Here, 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 here. And we getting it all day long here here and we're <laughs> we constantly you know fighting it off and we don't realize it but the thing is we also put a burden on ourselves because in fighting our own happiness or looking for our own happiness in the day we're also trying to make somebody else happy and the minute that that's not working the way that you think and it, it becomes that same shield is up that you're fighting off when you're trying to make somebody else happy that it impedes on your happiness and now you're back to square one you you, see, you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's hard to explain but I'm, I'm trying to explain it the best i can but all i'm saying is that make yourself happy and find your own happiness so to everybody out there who just realized like how hard it is to be happy on a daily basis congratulations you're human yeah you just you just had them over <laughs> yeah. thinking like Damn, I'm not happy right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, congratulations, you're human. Because none of us is. So stop shooting for happiness because you're not going to get it in a day. That's life. But what I'm saying is, you have to find that that happy medium. You have you have to, because you're not going to be happy. But you can be satisfied and have a great fucking day right in the middle, right in the middle. And stop trying to make people happy who are not happy themselves because you're going to fail. 
and it's only going to impede on your happiness. Yes. It's yes. only going to impede on you, and you'll be the sad dude, the sad girl. You it, 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 stop it. Recognize the signs, bro. Recognize the signs of somebody that's not happy. Yeah. And 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 please don't put your energy. Do not waste your energy trying to make an unhappy person happy. Sound like you speaking from experience. I definitely am, bro. <laughs> and that and and if you don't have nothing to say, I'm going to go into something else. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah. Which leads me to my next point. Don't be afraid to leave people behind. And I'm saying that with all due respect, like because we get so caught up and so attached to people in our lives that we feel like if we go on to do something else, that now we are leaving them behind mm. or we're not loyal or we're, you know, oh, I'm leaving my boy. I'm leaving my. No. You have to because all you're doing is setting false, a false precedence for that person. Because you have to at some point be okay knowing that out of 10, his level or her level is only six. Mm -hmm. So when I start to go to seven and eight, you got to be okay with going to seven and eight and leaving him at six. Because they're not going to go beyond that because they don't have the ambition to go beyond that. They don't. I'm just realizing this in my life. Fucking 39. I mean, I've had this happen in my life way before this, but I didn't recognize what it was. But I had no problem with letting people go. Another thing is, when you're doing good and you're doing right, you don't have to cut people off. They will cut themselves off. They, they will do it for you. You know, you don't have to say nothing. People will make the decision for you. If you're questioning, if somebody is right for you, just look at the signs, man. Do not ignore the signs. Yeah, and it's, it's just crazy. Just me to put my input in on that is I'm 29, and when I moved out here two and a half years ago, and I can I, I can quickly see, I saw that in you. Like, it was bothering you that, that you couldn't make or, or you couldn't help or make that, that, that next person happy. And mm -hmm. I just kind of went through that same thing Maybe at the age of well, I probably was about 26, 27 to the point where I was all it, I wouldn't call it a, a I don't give a fuck moment, but it was almost like well, like I said, as far as with the cutting off, well, I'm gonna just get to this mode where I'm gonna just play it this way because I'm gonna sit here and watch it play out because it's gonna it's and like I said it, 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 if it is what you think it is, it's gonna play out the, the way you you right. know it is, and then I said they and like I said they end up cutting itself off, so. I was already in that 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 mindset, and as far as just in that, and just having that energy, as far as like, just not even having, and you can call it selfish, or because I said from I mean, because you you can sit here and just naturally feel like you, you know what I'm saying, have to care for somebody, or you see somebody down, and, and that's fine, but. <laughs> and once you've been through certain situations and different things, and not saying that you got to be just fully just. On edge and just don't give a fuck. But when you just can just see some shit and you just point it out and just know how to move, that's when I said when I noticed with you, like okay, like I put myself in this situation, like I would, I would have, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Off. Yeah, for yeah. real. Yeah. Because I know that avenue that you're going down is no good, mm. and, and it takes out a lot of energy. And the older you get, the that that energy is, yeah. is can becomes more valuable. 100%. So once you're losing it to shit that does not even helping you, that yeah. does not even got nothing to do with you and yeah. your life, hey, make that's, where it becomes, well, yeah, that's where it becomes a problem. 100%. So yeah, most definitely. I mean, I said, I'm not telling anybody to be selfish about anything, but you got to understand and accept people for being who they are. Who they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And don't give them a false sense of hope. Like I've just recently realized how I, I gave somebody false sense of hope because I stayed at their level. Mm. I stayed at that level, and only because I'm thinking that ah uh, ah uh, uh, it's gonna it's gonna elevate yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah. it's gonna go you know it's gonna change it's gonna change, but you have to be okay with knowing that somebody is not on your level. That don't mean y'all can't still be cool. That don't mean that y'all can never talk again. But when it comes to making moves that moves that are going to alter your life, you have to be content with moving up the elevator. Do not stay here. So often, man, and I don't care who it is, honestly. You know what I mean? If 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 it's not your your husband or wife or boyfriend, girlfriend of a long time, and even at that, 
at that level, at some point in time, you got to keep moving. Mm -hmm. You got to keep moving, bro. And I, I've I've found myself being stagnant. I ain't scared to say it. I found myself sitting there for a while because our ideas didn't line up, or I'm thinking they should. And that's shame on me. I'm not mad at that person, but once I realize that your level is only six, I can't be scared to go to eight, nine, and ten. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's my advice of the day. I might have said too much, but I'm just being honest. Like that's perfect. It, it just is what it is. Don't give off a false sense of hope, man, because that's all you do when you hang around on somebody's floor for too long. You know, get on the elevator and keep going up, man. We don't have no limits. So shout out to me for that. I I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> to get that off my chest you know that that was something that came across but shout out to the people that that helps me because i'm not you know a lot of this thing sometimes it take people to help you out to realize yeah. you know so shout out to all my support system because that that's one thing that we gotta you know always credit to that's it no more <laughs> no i'm just like <laughs> glad we got that on the podcast <laughs> get shit on my leg <laughs> Spilling that whiskey, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Speaking of whiskey, this 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 podcast is sponsored by absolutely our whiskey in the yeah, glass you bottle. See that for glass this week. bottle? Yep. Yes, sir. Once again, if you want your whiskey in this bottle, it ain't, ain't got to be whiskey. We drink <laughs> rum. We drink yeah. vodka. Absolutely. Cognac. I mean, I don't even fuck with gin. It's <laughs> just what we doing this week. So, <laughs> hey, make send an email. You know, send an email. Ladies free before eleven pod at gmail dot com or you can that's actual email yeah okay. <laughs> I don't even know the email <laughs> I barely ever use that one. <laughs> so shout out to the ladies free podcast man ladies <laughs> free podcast tone tone JP let me toast to my brother it's man my little fool I don't want to spill it on the road I'm, I'm scared to uh, toast <laughs> <laughs> waste it everywhere. Toast to my brother, man. Toast to this newfound energy, man. Yeah, you know man. that was the last episode, but yeah, we we getting shit off our chest, man. <laughs> we getting shit off our chest this this, man, this time definitely. around, man. This this you know doors is open, man. We we done kick the doors open, and you know we out there. We give a lot of free free game, man. So let's 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 get into something else. Let's change the energy a little bit. Um, oh, you know what? Um, I don't know the update, but I do want to say shout out to uh. Wale, man. Shout out to Wale. Let me give him a hair mm -hmm. horn, man. Shout out to Wale. Uh, Wale was uh, sick, man. And I don't know if he's still sick uh, or what's going on, but he had been sick for a while. Since uh, around the 4th. Yeah, around the 4th of July. And he you know, took a little hiatus from social media and he had said he was sick. But you got any new info on that? Nothing new from when I uh, initially brought it to your attention, just that... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. And, and, and it drew, drew my attention because, like I said, uh, this was reported, um, well, he said around the 4th where he think he got sick. This was almost a week later, um, saying that he, he, he that he needed to take a step back, almost to take a little time off. So mm -hmm. that's where it kind of drew a little flag to me, like, you feeling sick, you need to take some time off from music. You know what I'm saying? Like, are, are you okay? Right. You know what I'm saying? Then he said it happened around the 4th. Well, you know, around the 4th, you, know, you around other people. So first thing come to my mind is COVID, or any, just anything. Um, I'm 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 just I'm just hoping to prank because Wale is one of my favorite artists. Yeah, facts. Um, he he got a hot joint out with Chris Brown right now. Yes. Uh, just, just just hope that I mean, and I, and I understand if you want to even put it out there, but just by you even telling us that you hey, I need, need a little time off. Mm -hmm. Wale has been through a lot in his career and seems like he always has to explain this so. Let me not have to explain yeah, myself this time. He is one of the ones that you know always have to. You hit that right. Yeah. <laughs> you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, with that so, yeah, so just press Wale and he gets better and back <clears throat> to making the hits that he do, you know? Yeah, and real quick, this is like five days ago. It says, Wale revealed he, he has been extremely sick with an undis undisclosed medical issue mm -hmm. and will take a hiatus for a while. Uh, and this is according to Billboard. The, the rapper took a Instagram took to his Instagram story on Wednesday, July seventh, to explain that he had been feeling ill for days. I am out of commission. I've been extremely sick since Saturday. He wrote, which we yeah, would be about the fourth. I ain't sure how long I'll be down, but this shit ain't slight. Mm. As soon as I come back strong, I'll be back strong. 
Though he has not been feeling well and could not respond to calls or texts, he took time to thank everyone who had reached out to him and shown support through the difficult experience. Thank you to everybody who called with genuine concern, he said. Wale concluded his post by saying, much love. See y'all soon. I always have a, um, a level of concern that gets raised when people have been sick for an extended period of time, especially during these times. So, especially when you gotta get to the stand when you gotta make a statement, you gotta yeah <laughs> say something. Yeah, because nobody knows you're sick. Yeah. Like, you could just go away and be sick. People yeah, be sick say, all the time. While they put out a, a a song where every six months people still live. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody know what's going on within that. Song. While you're sick, people are still bumping angles. Yeah, <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal record too. Um, while they you just. It's following the trend of what he always do, but yeah, people will be listening to angles while you recover, mm -hmm. and you come back, they will never know you. Don't miss a beat. That's yeah. why people come back, then lost weight, then got bigger, then did this and did that, and you're like, wait a minute, that's because while you were listening to his music, he was living life, yeah. or she was living life. So hitting yeah. new angles, right? <laughs> so, shout out to uh, Wale, man. Let me give him an air horn because, like you said, one of our favorite artists together. You know? yeah, and even um, just off the heels of that. Um, by me initially hearing about that was from Ross. You know, that's you know somebody that he still do does business with with MMG. So just him shouting him out and doing prayers. And speaking of Ross, mm -hmm. he he was spreading some more love. You know what I'm saying? I said love for the people that he with. And I mean, just 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 is just always helping and putting on for the city. I mean, always. I mean, I know Jeezy made the song put on for my city, but I mean, the, the man Ross has done so much for just the state of Florida, period. But I mean, it was um, a casual, um, man, it, it's been so many different stories on this as far as a building collapsing. I believe it was a, yeah. a housing building, like a condo kind of. building. Mm -hmm. it's a kind you know of. what I'm saying? You got. I even read some, some reports from like some Japanese experts saying that as far as with the structure and everything and how it's, 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 it's a lot of stuff being exposed about it but I, yeah. I just wanted to shout out to Ross because he, he he's he's put out there what what was one one of the m many different things that he got his hand in but he you know with the, with the wing stop mm -hmm. he had some food trucks go out there and, and feed all the first responders not saying he was the only one he was other cats out there but just him out there hey free food hey y'all guys out here putting y'all Tales out online, you know, it's been over what ninety some casualties, and yeah, it's, like, it's just man, just numbers at ninety seven now. Yeah, it, it, bro, it's just Confirmed. it's just so it's just so sad. So I mean, just shedding light on that. I don't know if you had any any, any more on that. I don't. Um, in case you didn't know, what we're talking about the the Surfside um, was a Florida um, condo collapse. Like mm -hmm. the building literally collapsed. Collapsed and. Those are structure issues. Those are straight structure issues, and those, to me, are things that have been ignored over the years. I'm no engineer. I don't mean, cause y'all, but mm -hmm. they even say the people on the board that own, like, as far as that the property manager, mm -hmm. don't know a lick of nothing as far as that business. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even hammer a nail to a wall. And that's a shame. Because even if you can't, then you still should have a team. Yeah. And you get inspections, and you get... and. I, I always like to give y'all perspective because a lot of times it comes all across that we're just giving our opinions. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give y'all something because I've, I've been in this industry and I've watched these things happen. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> back in Joliet, the Hollywood Casino. Mm -hmm. You remember they had the fire and they rebuilt. Mm -hmm. I personally took scaffolding there oh, and, and structures there mm -hmm. because... The, the construction company who did the parking deck did a bad job and there was starting to be a crack. There was the pillars, the actual pillars, the, the main square um, concrete pillars that normally is what you build first. You know, you build from the ground. All your pillars are going in. This is your structure. And then you build the platforms off of that, whatever. So those were cracking. Mm hmm. And I mean, when I say they're, they were cracking, they were cracking while people were in the casino and cars were parked in there. Mm. I got a phone call saying, we need your help. And I'm like, what? You're the only one that got access. We need you to go in there. Please load the truck up and then drive the oh, truck. This was when you was with Yeah, okay. when I was working there. And please drive the truck down there. 
because we have to extend these pillars to give support because if this if this parking deck collapses people and cars are in there it's over bro i literally got up and this isn't this is not a made-up story i can confirm this but i literally got up i went to that warehouse loaded that truck myself and then drove that semi to that parking deck and let uh, the construction company unload me and they put those pillars up to support it because they had to redo a lot of the pillars because it was it was poorly done by the construction company and this is all why people are in that casino gambling and had no idea that it was going on but why not tell anybody why not alert them that that you're, you're under danger yeah well i guess because with people not being in there was a thing where like we don't want to cause a mass hysteria where people are going to run out but I, onto and, the, yeah the onto the parking deck yeah. but I, at the same time it also wasn't an immediate threat that it was going to fall right that at that moment mm-hmm. so this was like um preparation for what could happen in the future right so it was enough concrete pour and enough structure there okay. that we know this thing will hold but that's the sign of a good company you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying it's saying that hey we see that the foundation has some cracks like we see that there's some issues so this could pose problems for the future but instead of waiting to the future they like shit get out here now like yeah. they treated it as it was going to fall at that moment hmm. and so that's what i'm saying like so this is years years of just neglect and poor poor construction to me this is neglect. It is. Mm-hmm. It, it just is. You know, it, which is also what we saw with the Des Plaines Bridge. And Georgia, yeah. You know, so I, shout out to them, man. I, I don't, you know, I didn't have a lot on this, but that just popped in my head. But I, I just feel bad because I, I think there's a hundred people. It's ninety-seven total, but I mm-hmm. rounded out to a hundred. That's a hundred people that could still be here, but based off somebody's negligence as a company and and and, and laziness. You know, and and even the management. I'm not even going to say the construction company because I don't know how long that building has been there. Right. So it could just be time for maintenance. Yeah, that happens. It's, it's been a turnaround with that management yeah. has been big. Sad, man. A bunch sad. of new people. Yeah, sad. Right. So condolences to those families, man, of everybody who has lost someone, man. Airhorn or them, man. Shout out to them. But I, I learned from the best. We actually offer this now. I learned from you <laughs> yeah. to catch shit and and, and, and say something. Yeah, don't <laughs> and I want I want you don't edit this. You said yeah, it was ninety seven. We gonna round it up to a hundred. So you just killed off three more people. Yeah, because that's what it's. Gonna- <laughs> I wasn't trying to kill nobody extra. All I was saying was, and I mean, and this, this is just like, please don't take this as nothing. It, yeah. it, I'm just doing a report. I, I put my reporter hat on. It's 97, so I'm just saying it's 100 people, man. Oh my god! But I don't want it to be 100 people. Shout out to you for getting on my ass. So pause. Oh man, I, I definitely just asked three people, but I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to. All I was trying to say is that when when you look at the numbers, yeah, man, I got you. Most people gonna say a hundred anyway. Hey, it's your fault. You are always trying to catch people. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so funny hey, hey, Look that's the only one You, re- you memorize huh I ain't here no. <laughs> What the mother drops that You know Ladies free mm-hmm. podcast Tom Tom JP Okay we on to the next <laughs> we, We're not for to stay there What we got <laughs> there, there was something I heard though um, I heard Faith Evans talking on um, I think it was Sway in the morning she was talking and she was talking about one of her friends to um sway and she was saying how talking about sex drive and how when her friend realized like her that she couldn't match the sex drive of her husband like because she had you know and for whatever reason she had a lot going on and whatnot but she just got to that point where she was literally saying it's cool we can get somebody else like she was about to open the door for another woman just so that she could satisfy him sexually damn faith not not faith no it was one of her friends oh i was was one of her friends (laughs) friends. yeah so with (laughs) this is hard see this is hard this is a hard conversation no it's a hard conversation when it's two men because Mm. what i'm saying is it completely no yeah 
Pause. Not man to man. I'm saying when it's us two on the podcast talking about it, mm -hmm. it's completely different because it's almost a double standard to me there. Because this answer is going to be totally different from us two and a woman. I think most, I think you'll get more women that ask will me. that will contemplate and think about. Maybe I should just let him ask me. No, I know I am. But what I'm saying is, I think you're going to get more women that'll say that'll even think about this. Mm -hmm. I don't think most men is even a thought. You're like somebody another another you another nigga. Ask me you, what you think. Would you have would that thought ever cross See, your mind? And and this is why at least for now we good with just being me and you and still getting some good <laughs> raw opinions because I'm looking at the motherfucker like you're a selfish motherfucker for having this high ass sex drive. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the friend the uh, who, whoever the, the the girl is like hey stand strong queen. You willing to bring another set of thighs in your in your relationship just to satisfy him? Thighs, breasts, and legs. That's a whole number twelve. Because I can almost guarantee you, you ain't always fully satisfied. Mm. So for you to take the extra step to do something like that, but see, sex is different for for different people. That's bro, the thing. I'm, like, bro, if, so, it, if if it gets to the point where your sex drive and it's affecting your relationship to the point where. You're considering that? I mean, we can we we can bring T Pain on here. He can tell Iggy shut me up because that 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 helped this relationship to the point where him and his wife is together today. Bringing in uh, 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 other chicks. Remember they they spoke about this years ago as far as uh, messing around other chicks just to keep keep shit going. So whether she had a high stage driver or he did, it worked for them. Which I mean, I said it, it can be different, different cases, but I just, I just think if, if I'm just gotta, if I'm just being honest, like man, like I just think it's almost like man, bro, like like we we gotta definitely we gotta definitely get some female opinions on this because you got somebody to call. I, I definitely do. Okay, but, but this is the thing because <clears throat> I feel you, but I'm I'm gonna shake the tree a little bit because people's sex drive is different. So for her, you saying she might have not been satisfied. I think. Uh, most women, m most women, I'm not speaking for everybody. There is some anomalies out there, but what I'm saying is most women are probably satisfied with once or twice a week. That man, in, in this case, was probably three to four. See, I wasn't five. saying as far as satisfied with just sex. I'm talking about satisfied as a wife, as oh, a no, girlfriend. See, yeah, see, this was just a sex thing. Well, it was, was so, sexy. But, Everything see, else was good, they said. What they said. So I, so that's all we could go off of. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to. No, but no, but I'm, I'm just telling you, it's just, uh, and I said, and I don't, I don't, I don't add variables things to it, but I'm just saying as far as for a woman to go to that extreme, I'm like, okay, is, is, is the man willing to do this? Would, would a man yeah. bring in a, that's what another I'm thing saying. to come, come and take care of his woman? That's why I said this is a double standard because I think when a woman would, to me, a woman would be more thoughtful in this situation than a man would. See, I don't even think I would men accept is, that as being that. If I feel like that, like, I'm like my sex drive is hot. I've actually been like that in one one relationship. Mm -hmm. where I just felt like I just wasn't getting. What I needed out of her, even though she was a great woman, did I think to even bring up? Well, maybe we should need like the way I went about it was, was wrong because I just I just broke the shit off without mm -hmm. trying to fix it. But did did once that I have a uh, the, the thing in my head that man, you no, know, maybe I should talk to her about maybe bring somebody else in here or trying to start like. But before you get to that, see the luxury you had in that, you were able to break it off. So that's why I want to put mm. it on another level. You're married now. You've been married for let's say ten years. Divorce. And <laughs> after ten years, you just divorced, bro. I'm not, bro. That, that, I think that. But you didn't even take the second step. You didn't even. You didn't even talk to her about it. You said you just okay. Don't talk about yeah. We yeah. We can talk about it and then and and, and if you you bring it, bro, I, I wouldn't feel right as a man mm. that you got to resort to bring another woman in our relationship to fulfill what. My drive is, like I said, to the point where I just think that's in a way kind of like selfish. I mean, it's just me. 
You a selfish, but what if it's her idea mother, and not I, yours? Be, and her idea could not be the the thing that she wants, but the thing that she thinks that's going to save her relationship or save the save that spark. What if it's? I was going to say, what if it's a spark? What if it? But uh, but, bro. Call, you got somebody that's gonna call and say, I mean, that's gonna that's gonna say that 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 they agree that oh uh, yeah, I bring another chicken. No, in. I, I'm it's just a, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying I think women are more. Not, well, it, or what? I think women would be more acceptable to the idea than men are. Yeah, because you got shit. They every I know these women lesbians nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make this all these call. women that done lick some. Come on, man, we being real. <laughs> no. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Shit, they, they but, but that was a, that was different. <laughs> mm, come on, right? Uh, she gonna kill me, but I I gotta do this. You call. Oh, uh, she yeah, she is. She definitely gonna. Kill no, me. she don't like. She don't want to be on a podcast ever. Yeah, she ain't answer for me either. Smart, <laughs> smart move, sister. <laughs> Tyson, you better answer. <laughs> yeah. Smart, smart, smart move. Okay, I, I got another one. If she called back, we, we can most definitely, but. Yeah, bro, like. I got another one. Oh, shit. I know. We're about to get the break down. I don't, right even, know. I don't even know what, what to expect from this. <laughs> I don't either. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, and then I get the call. Hello. Hello, sister. How you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Are you busy? Am I busy? Yeah. In the car. Okay, you got like two minutes. Yeah. Okay, me and Jay is on this podcast right now, right? So, hey, sister, I don't, I don't want to surprise you, but I have a question hey. for you that we just arguing back and forth about. Okay. Here, here's the scenario. There's a woman who's been married for like ten years, and she's realizing now that her sex drive is not up to par with her husband so she feels like she's nope. not satisfying him right <laughs> <laughs> that laugh tell me it all <laughs> right so she she feels like she's not satisfying him so she considered allowing another woman to come in to help satisfy his sex drive and I told Jay I said that I think that women would be more acceptable it's almost like a double standard i think women would be more acceptable to this idea or this ideology of bringing somebody else in because she felt like she just couldn't do it for whatever reason i don't know what she had going on but it didn't seem like nothing medically or nothing like that where she just it's just like she just didn't it just wasn't her and that's it's okay some people are like that mm -hmm. and Jay was saying it's a little more he was more on the side of it being selfish for the man but I'm like what if it's her idea so I guess my only question to you is would that ever I probably know the answer to this but would that ever even be a thought in your head because because of what you had what you have established in the, in the marriage and everything else is great outside of that and me deciding to bring another woman into the the, the Help satisfy Right. Would that ever? So maybe I'm, I'm not. Would that ever be a thought that I would do, or do you think? Or, or I, yeah, would that? I'm, ever, I'm not sure what you're asking. Me. Would Would that ever be a thought in your mind, or would it just be that I can't satisfy him? That it is what it is. Or, or would that be something that you would even consider? Like when you go down the list of remedies. Well, I problem. would have to say, well, I would have to say for me, I think I am a very open-minded person, and I am not completely shut off to every single thing. I mean, of course, everybody has their nose about, you know, that's just I'm not going on. And right. then you have your things that you're open-minded to. So, no matter what the situation is. I think when it comes to my husband, I think that I'm very open-minded and I would consider um, if that was the case. But I think what I'm hearing with her is, first I will have a conversation with him because what we assume to not be, because sometimes some a man is not, if that's not something that she is into doing and she's per se doing it just 
for him. That's what I was saying. I think he would feel a certain kind of way because then it, you you would then later on kind of throw that back in my face mm-hmm. and be like, well, you did it for me. You know what I mean? So have a conversation with him about whether or not or is this really, are you satisfied? Instead of just assuming that he's not satisfied, mm-hmm. one. And then, you know, asking him, you know, well, what what do you feel like we can do? And letting him know that I'm open to doing whatever it is that would help to satisfy. Because I don't want to do anything that's, that's going to jeopardize what, what we do have. And that very well could be because you're doing it for the wrong reason versus something that y'all decided to do together. Right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It, it absolutely makes sense. And I, I agree with you. But from the story and listening to what what faith was saying this was not new so i guess they had discussed this so this had been something that had been going on because she said out her mouth like it took a while for her to realize that i just cannot satisfy him at the level that he wants to be satisfied and this is and i'm just putting a number on it not quoting her but let's say one once or twice a week where his expectations are probably like four to five times a week and so she just like with everything that I have going on with life, with, you know, kids, with family, everything, I just can't meet those expectations. So that's how I think they got to this, you know? So it wasn't like she just sprung it on him and said, Hey, somebody's going to come in, you know? So she didn't say whether he was okay with it or not, but she did say that she, she talked to her and told her that there has, you know, there may be another way, you know? So, so I, but I get it, but, I mean, and I, like you said, I, we don't know the whole story that behind the whole thing or whatever, because I would have to throw back at her. Yeah, we all got stuff going on in life. You know what I mean? Like, well, we, so but you make time for what you feel like is important and what you feel like, you know, means something to you. Right. So is this a situation where you are putting everything else before when it comes to quote unquote, satisfying your, your man sexually because that's part of being in a relationship, part of being in a relationship. So I don't know if I was, I was the man, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, it's not about you bringing somebody else into the, into it to quote unquote satisfy yeah, me. I want bringing, you. I want you. It's about bringing you up more I want often. you and I want you, yeah, I want you to want me. And, and, and us to do this together. Now, if, if bringing another person in, in here is what is going to satisfy the both of us, if that's what if we, that's the way that we want to go, then that's one thing. But you just telling me because you don't want to, you don't want to make time to have sex with me, you just going to give, give me somebody else right, right. just to do that? Like, yeah, no, I, I have a problem with her when it comes to that. Yeah. So it, it, it sounds like it's more to to this situation than the sex, it's, I think y- y'all need to evaluate y'all relationship for real for real at this point. I agree. I agree. With because we ain't on the same page about what, you know, what, what we doing. Yeah. So that I don't need you to tell me or give me somebody else to go. I can go do what I want to do with whoever. You don't got to tell me that, yeah, like I can, oh, well, here, here she well, goes. Like, yeah, come on now. Well, that would be cheating. If you just do well, whatever what you saying. want. I don't need that. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So I don't need you. To me, it's, cheating is not necessarily so much about um, the actual act, but it's it, it, it behind the mindset, too. So yeah, starts way before just that. Just because you tell me, just because you say, oh, you can go do it, and versus, you know what I mean, me, me saying that it's not okay to go do, like, that makes it want, makes it better? I don't I don't, I don't or I don't know. Like, it's just a little deeper for me when it comes to that. So, no, I agree. But I, I, I'm glad you said that. I mean, you you gave a whole another perspective. But the thing that we was really getting at, I'm just glad that you said, like you said, you're open minded, and that's just you, and that's you know everybody's different. So, I like I agree with what you say. I agree with everything you said. But it's it's funny because I just think it's it's somewhat of a double standard. I think now if the shoe was on the other foot. I don't think we even it takes us a long time to even get to that point, like where we even thinking about that. And it was me a long time. I'm like, no, I would I would no, it's no it's no question. Like, exactly. I would I would I would if it takes us to break off whatever we got, 
just for you to go find what you I'd rather do that than bro. yeah you bring another man yeah in. Like, I don't need another man to get that spark it exactly. might but so and that's what I was saying just like I said everything I said was right and one thing is just far as just like even like you say if it gets to that point where we had to talk and and bring this up that's not saying that this is still something that she wants to do. She's just at that desperate point like, as far as like, okay, what do I need to do to satisfy you? So, of course, that's always going to be a thing. That, that's that's not what she wants to do, but she's doing whatever it takes to satisfy her man. But what if it is? <laughs> what if it then, is then, what she wants to do? Then, then, then I and think... She's not doing it for I, him, no, but for no, Then I think that would have been brought up way, way, way before it, it, it got to this point. Well, not necessarily because she's saying that it took a while for her to realize that I just can't satisfy him at the level that he wants to be satisfied. Right. So, but she and never I, said that, that 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 bringing in that woman is gonna. What'd you say now? Right. I, I mean, I think I hear what what Jay is saying too because it took you a while to realize that you. I mean, how long does it take you to realize somebody's sex drive versus yours? Like, it doesn't yeah. take you a while. You're battling with yourself or whether or not you want to allow this man to bring somebody else that because you're battling with yourself because you're not comfortable with it. So again, are you doing it for for y'all as a relationship or are you doing it for him? And if you're doing it to, to quote unquote more to please him, then mm-hmm. I feel like that's where the regret is going to come in mm-hmm. at. And then when he doesn't give you the same energy for something else or whatever, then you throw it back at him and saying, well, I did that for you. And, and then you went off and did like, so then that causes even more mm-hmm. stuff. Like, I mean, I, I just think, I'm, I'm just, when I say that I'm open to, if, if for whatever reason you, this is part of, of what you want to do and this is something that you feel like, this, these are things that I feel like we I need to know ahead of time and I think that you do you do it no before exactly so there are some things that I'm willing to do and there are some things that I'm I mean that I'm open to doing and there are some things that I'm just that that's not so you knew a way ahead of time that this wasn't what you who you were so I'm asking you what are you really what are you really holding what are you really holding on to because Mm -hmm. okay now I'm gonna stand on her side I'm gonna stand on her side for a second and because I I know for sure. Like I can give you real life accounts of people that I know that it okay. wasn't it was not this way before they got married. And this is a common thing. I'm not breaking news to y'all. Y'all know exactly well, he like got I know. The freak here, the, the don't marriage even, it, it don't even have to be marriage. It, I know people that are in relationships that uh-huh. things were completely different before you got settled before you got comfortable before the tenure set in of four five six years and now mm-hmm. things are just let's just be honest nobody in in most most say, people in the relationship the I'm not yeah that. exactly that. and that, that that's what I'm, I'm Paul, just saying there that there is a foundation where i'm saying is there's a foundation of who a person is and i am a strong believer that people can they put up a, a, a facade and act like they are somebody for for so long? Eventually, and it doesn't take long. Somebody is going to get comfortable and really show who they are. Now, the question is: Are you going to be open to really seeing who that person are, or are you still holding on to who you want that person to be? So, I just think when it, the sex is so. I don't want to say small, but that 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 is a small. It becomes smaller as you get as, as, as your tenure as, goes. Exactly. As you age and in a relationship, not, and it's not the the whole thing when it comes to the the relationship. Like I always ask, I, I think sex and being sexual and intimate with somebody is ninety percent of it is more mental than it is physical. So. You, it, it's deeper than that for me. When you get into when you say I'm realizing that this, 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 he, I can't satisfy him. You knew, you knew this was a long time ago. Now you were, you, you are coming to terms with yourself of whether or not you want to give up this relationship to allow him to do this or be whoever he wants to be, and you deal with it. So this is about her. It's not really to me. It's not about him. Mm-hmm. So there's things within her, and I agree with that. Yeah, there's yeah. 
There's things I was saying, her because I was saying him. So this that's, is that's absolutely another. about her because yeah, you knew like she said it took me a while. Then you knew it a long time ago. Yeah, and so and you I, were battling within yourself of what who you were and what you were willing to do and not do. So now you to a point where and now because y'all probably have now put in you got kids, now you done bought a house, you putting all this other stuff in it, and so you're like, lot of stuff at risk. am I willing? Am I willing to give all of that up for something uh, as small as sex? But to me, being intimate with my partner means a lot. It means I'm connecting with you on a level mentally. So, yeah, that means, like, and if I can't do that with you, that means something to me. So I don't know if I want to, that other stuff don't kind of, to me, starts to not really matter. Because I can build with anybody, for real. Right. That's, that's a fact. Yeah, so you you're right. I think the issue is within her. I mean, I guess the moral of the story is yeah, this is be careful. So yeah, I don't <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I just I and, I, I, and I don't think mine. I don't think her bringing somebody else into the relationship for to quote unquote satisfy him sexually because again you don't know what satisfy and again we we don't know right, well, right. What are we really talking about? What is she satisfying him to do? Like what she won't give him head? He gonna he want to go along? With, like what are we right. what are we talking about? Yeah, and and what is this woman going to do it? It sounded like to me you were talking about more time because I got life, girl. Get your life. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, w- one more thing, and then we can probably close it out. Is is as far as when you were saying, well, what if this is something that she wants to do? And I don't know if you're, but like my 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 counter to that was, well, if this is something that she wanted to do, it would it would came quicker than what you're saying now. Well. No, yeah. as far as okay, well now it's becoming an issue because now he's not satisfied and now it, it, it's starting to bother me. So if this is something that you was willing to 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 expect, or you was considering before, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, did yeah. a way well, way more than to the point where where, where it's at now. So that right. so that's why I looked at as far as if you willing to do it now to the point where you pretty much like man, I gotta do what I gotta do to save my relationship. If it's to do this. It's always gonna be in the back of your head, like man. Look what I just sacrificed just to save us. So if anything goes wrong, like well, not said, you, huh, oh, I'm, look, I'm look, look what the what heck I did. What are you saving? What is it that you're? What, yeah, what are you saving? Well, but like you said, because I mean, well, it, like I said, if you put it in the in the sense that you you've been married, you done built a family, you got the house, and you just got all these things together, yeah, so you so, so you trying so to. That, so What's, what's come with what, it? What, what's the, yeah. Because when it comes to, like you said, she probably looking at what well, if I don't do this, he probably gonna go out and do it. You know what I'm saying? Go cheat. This is a hell of a conversation. It can go so many ways because there's so many variables and we don't know. But I, because I could go yeah. with exactly yeah. what you're saying and I could also counter it. So I, it's like we could do this all day, but I, I love the perspective that you brought and that's why I called you. I'm sorry to hit you on the spot and. And and put you put you on a platform without your I, I girl probably would not jump on the highway <laughs> talking about this. You you, you, you probably San Antonio. I just don't even I just don't even be knowing when you call and you ask me. I be like, oh God, what is he about to say? So, hey, but it's, it's, hey, it's cool. I don't I don't mind. I I love to give give my perspective on on stuff. I think that I I come from a different side a lot of times. And I think mm-hmm. more people like to be um, traditional. I guess politi- yeah, traditional or politically correct yeah. about stuff, mm-hmm. and so they they are concerned about what other people are going to say and how other people look at are going to look at them. And I think that over the years I have matured enough to be comfortable in my shoes that I don't worry about yeah. what other people think, and I don't say that like I mean we are humans, you know. Nobody wants to be made fun of or looked a certain kind of way or whatever but I take that with a grain of salt especially from the different people that give those throw those things out when you judge other people for stuff like I said I'm not I, I just I'm not judging I, I, and I hope it didn't come off as a way of judging her but I would more so dig deeper into her and mm-hmm. what her goal is out of this versus 
you making this about what he wants and I'm doing this for him and no yeah. this is this is about you and what right. you are you know trying to do so yeah that's what I, I got just, from it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you, sister. That was some great no feedback. Problem. Yeah, I think you solved our problem, and you could turn around and bust that you from San Antonio. Now, come on back. <laughs> I'll see y'all when I get there. Girls, I was I ten by ten. All right, <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. She most definitely that uh, hit that highway talking about yeah. that. <laughs> she made that detour. Skirt. <laughs> yeah, that was dope, and I. I got our other person. We, I'm gonna call her because I thought I was gonna call her back, but I'm I, I'm only gonna ask her because I think we got our. That was a great perspective. I don't think we need no more, mm-hmm. but I do want to be fair. Just to do two women, but I'm just gonna ask the question this time. I'm not gonna. Yeah. We're not gonna elaborate. We got the stuff to get into. I got a pee dude. So look, <laughs> you, just do that, you bro. can if you want to. You can go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just gonna ask her a question real quick. What's up, sister? How you doing? Hey, sister. I'm good, brother. <laughs> hey, I'm sitting here with Jay. We on we on the podcast, and we were sitting here talking mm-hmm. about something. You back on the podcast? You back? <laughs> Hate to put you on here. Oh, I had to spare the moment, but no, this is a quick question, and I'm gonna let you go if you got one minute. So we were talking about. Oh, no, we were talking about. Uh, um, Faith Evans was on a, a show, and she was talking about. Her one of her friends who had considered in her marriage because she she figured out she couldn't satisfy her husband sexually. And so she had considered allowing another woman to come in. And so me and yeah, me and Jay was talking about it. And I was telling him that I think it's more of a double standard. I said, I don't even I think women are more likely to think about that opposed to me and i said most men are not even going to think about that it won't even get to that point I no, said, no if, they, well, if they really really love them they would not want to do that at yeah. all and that's what i was saying because she was saying like i guess it's as far as like the amount of you know let's say like you know she, she's okay with two times a week and then or, and he's more like four you know four to five when she's like i just can't no i can't meet him there and so she's thinking about bringing another woman in. So my only question was, is well, I think we already got well, an answer from you. Wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. But back up. I got a little more to say. <laughs> First of all, when you met this man, I'm going to call him the N-word. When you met this man, the day, day one, when y'all started talking, before y'all got together as a real couple, y'all should establish this whole sex thing. So how was the sex in the beginning when y'all first started? Let's right start there. And that okay. See, see, we just had somebody else we was just talking to, and my only response to that was I I was just thinking like it probably changed because of the marriage. So let's say that um that they um early on I got one right here, Jeff. Early on, they it was probably great. But as you know, Mm -hmm. people get comfortable, you know, and I that's what I was telling now. I was Mm -hmm. like the the Normally, the longer the tenure, the more people get comfortable. So now that mm-hmm. she's getting comfortable, now she's like, well, I don't, don't got to do it. Oh, she, not, she don't want to do it. Yeah, right. I'm not she don't want to do it because she feel like she'll have to. Yeah, I'm established all, now. We got a house, kids. We got this. I ain't got to. People can't think like that because if you ain't putting out like you was, that man is going to start having wonder in the eyes. It's going to start drifting off to somebody else. I'm going to give it to you like you were getting in the beginning. And you're going to be half out. <laughs> I had to put the air horn on for you after that one. <laughs> yeah. So that's true. That is true. I, I agree with because, you. Uh, there's too much competition out here. There's too many pretty women. I mean, you know, it's just too much women to get in with others, you know. And the man will have one or nine. He ain't getting it at home, so he's going to drift out somewhere else. That's mm-hmm. just how it is. So mm-hmm. she needs to get her game face on. Stop trying to get comfortable and get your ass in no sheets. Because <laughs> a woman's supposed to be a freak in the sheet, <laughs> but a lady in the truth. <laughs> Jay missing all this game. Hey, I feel this you. All this game. Look, <laughs> the game has to be sold, not told. <laughs> Hey, we be giving out, we be giving out free gems here and there. But yeah, they, they just got some free game. 
a little free game from us. But yeah, yeah, I just wanted to ask you that because we was going back and forth about it. But yeah, you, I agree. I agree with you. You know, and it, and I think yeah, it, they if, get too comfortable. Yeah, and if it gets to that point where you you get that comfortable, where you know what I'm saying, you don't, you know, you're not satisfying him, and you still like oh whatever, then I think it might be time to to reconsider. You know that that yeah, that's kind of reconsider. Yeah, and you need to go tell you somebody that's not gonna give it to you once a day like you want it because right. that man right there, that is not him. And he's gonna keep cheating on you because you're not giving giving it to him. So she dumb. So you real dumb. Whoever you are, lady, you are dumb. <laughs> I got a question. Before we, we huh? uh, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but I got a question. Hey, so before, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but whatever, because remember how we was just saying earlier how as you get older, you know what I'm saying, as far as just the, the sex drive, it, it, it drops. It, it drops. Mm-hmm. So what if, <laughs> what if do you say they drop? So what? So 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 he got a drop here just because they, just because no, that Renita's arguing the opposite. opposite. What? I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to school you real quick. After he cover your ears, let me tell you something. I just said my age. You know how old that is. So let me tell you something. Hey, nothing on here drop. Got a damn thing. You got to keep it. You got to keep it. Spicy. I'm trying not to say too much because my brother right there. <laughs> no, I mean, so, 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 okay, Jay talk nasty all the time. Right, right, so, so, that's, gonna be yeah, so, 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 that's actually going to what I'm saying, so, because I, I don't, I, I'm not actually agreeing as far as how people's sex drives drop as they get older. I think you can do different things to, to keep it going. So, that's what I'm saying, so, nah, if, so, you, so, if, if dude, they if, don't drop, because, they get freakier. The only if, you get. if that's the case, then I'm in a world of trouble because I'm, I, yeah. I'm getting freakier as I get older. So if if with the woman I'm dating, you, shit, you shit. know what's funny is that's what they say. They say that the older you get, the stronger the your sex you drive. Are. Yeah, I, 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 of course. I think, I, I, think it's, I think it's a team thing. You come in both individually, yeah. willing to open up and. You know what Whoa. I'm saying? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, not the dude open up. <laughs> hey, some of these dudes open it up. Yeah, they, they absolutely are. Okay, we're not going to Atlanta. But I'm just saying. <laughs> no, it's like, New York. In Atlanta. <laughs> them, 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 I told you about the New York dudes. I don't know about it, but Joe Button, I'm talking about that. If you don't keep it popping, you're going to lose your loved one. And I'm going to tell you now. Because if you ain't uh, doing something, the next bitch, I mean, girl, real. One day we're going to talk about. You. How, just how they've been so creative, and just how sex has transformed in today's time to the point where man, it, it's hard to compete with some of the shit that these motherfuckers is doing, <laughs> and what these women is allowing. <laughs> All right, we need to yeah, exactly, exactly, it's it's exactly. Hard. That's it's another hard. conversation. Uh huh. What you say, Renita? It's hard. Let me tell you something. It's called baby steps. You gotta call before you walk. Oh hell so no! Guess what? If you just, if you see something new women, and you wanna try, women is out steps. here. Eating the wrong things, and I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> and I'm crawling for nothing for that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. I would just say this. And yeah, I, I would say this, and I would leave it alone. I think we gotta stop basing our lives. It's not even about. It's not even about the meow. Uh, doing the the most. It's the women that have to do the most. Because if you get in there now, look, okay. Now when we get in the club. You are twerky, 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 and bumping it down and all of that. Okay, you better do the same move when you mm-hmm. get your ass off with that They bed. don't. They fall out after that dog that twerking. Saying, I, we got to stop allowing our life. Even even sex life is in here, but what I'm saying is we got to stop allowing our lives, period, to be based off of what we see on social media and, yep. and, and, and everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Social media is running the yep. world and killing relationships one day at a time. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, don't, uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, they it. Yeah. yeah. People get sucked into it and they, oh, they, they think they that's, that stuff is real. Yep. Like, this stuff ain't real. Yep. You know? And, it's and, not real. Yep. And we, we can, that's something we about to get into next. But really, I thank you. I don't want to hold you up. I'm so glad you didn't hang up on me and cuss me out. Oh, no. That is... <laughs> Take both our mics. <laughs> right, we, no, we got a seat for you. We got a seat for yeah. you right in the middle. It's, 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 good. it's always good hearing from you. Definitely. Love you. Love you, sis. Love you too. And I appreciate y'all. But let me tell you. 
And then about to me, you gotta do the most of the day. That's the one. The woman is the one who's supposed to put it down. Well, it's like you said, y'all, y'all, y'all better yeah. reflect that from the club to the bed. <laughs> That's right. All right. I'm telling the women, and I tell her, thank you for Chip to give me a call. Hit me up on the on the Gmail or on, on Facebook, whatever you're talking about. Yeah, we go. I'll give you some tips. Right. We're gonna hit you every week. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye. That was some great insight, man. That was a great insight from two credible women. Two credible women. Man, why you telling me it was cool to get up while she was talking? I want to hear what she said. It was cool to what? To, uh, get up and use the bathroom while she was talking. Oh, I just thought you had to go. That's what. No, she was going in. Hey, no, I don't. She was just. Hey, but you heard. I, I, I could have held a little bit more. She, re, she reiterated everything yeah. once you got back. That's pretty much what she was saying about the woman. And she was just like, oh, girl, tripping. She, mm-hmm. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love to hear from women. That's why we do what we do, man. We want to be fair, you know? So getting into that, she said something that made me think about something. <clears throat> when she was saying, it, you know, it was on the woman and we talked about the social media running things brings me to something i was watching on drink champs shout out to nori and drink champs man and what they do love that show with Lil mo they just had a recent interview with Lil mo and she talked about it was something she talked about a lot shout out to that legend because Lil mo is definitely a legend but shout out to them but something that she said when you know she talked about her addiction to opioids and how you know, she changed her, you know, she had to change the, her frame of thinking and she was addicted to these, you know, t- to these pills. And in case you don't know op- opioids, it's, just, it's medication, you know, medication in, in, in the form of pills, but, pain meds. you know, pain meds and whatnot that's giving you a high and they go so high that you're, you know, they're comparing it to heroin, you know. So if you go to a, her- a higher dosage, they're like, you might as well do heroin. But Either way, she said something and I'm tying the two together because like I was saying that social media and images of people are ruining what people may have something good, but social media is really ruining it. And I'm thinking about her saying that she offered Future at a Philly show, a Percocet. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, I'm not taking that. I'm not going to go perform like that. Mm -hmm. So which is my... It, it, it's my thought and also my complaint because I know you're making music and I know that. So it's not Future's responsibility to raise nobody's kids. But when you broadcast something on the other side, you know. See, and I'm happy you brought that up because that never said that he don't do it. That could have been like, right. I got to go handle just business. Not, so so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not yeah, going to be on that. I just don't do it on business. Now, nah, because, right. because you heard so many times as far as when people get in that, in that, in that, in that studio and they rap or yes. they create d- this great music that come out yeah. and they, they get to their level where they drink, smoke, pop pills, all that. So that's why I'm like, okay, because they may seem like, okay, well, Future saying something that he don't do. He mm. could have been like, okay, I got to perform a show. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. Right. No, I'm cool on that. Yeah, some people can't perform. That, like I mean, that's just like, hey, I, mean, I don't care. Like, hey, I, I, I like taking edibles, but I know when to take them, when not to. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know when to drink and when not to, especially if I got to drive. Or, uh, so, yeah, so right, that's right. what I took with that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, that was a great interjection. And I, I love that because I got the same thing. But she was like, my bad for listening to the music and automatically assuming that because you make music off of this, this is what you do. But I think it kind of checked her too. Like as far as like, okay, even though I thought that this is what well, this was cool for me to offer this to you, like, damn. She's and she said that. Like she no. said, What the fuck are you doing? Mo like yeah. she said she had to check herself. You're right. And and she did. And it just goes to show, like, I guess the message in this is number one, don't let the music influence you to the point where you think that what people are saying is exactly what they do. It, 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 bro, the 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 music, inf- the, the the influence, the in whatever you want to call it, bro, it 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 kills it it it, it, harm, it does it does a lot of harm. Yeah, because just that simple as far as you one of your favorite artists is doing this, so you start doing it. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Could, and that's what Future glorified him popping pills, yeah. sipping lean, all that. So what a lot of these kids do now? They popping pills. They doing all that because they hear it from the artists. You heard it from like you can hear it in little and little baby rap. She tell you, yeah, I rap about this shit, but this is what I'm I'm, I'm on now. Yeah, I rap about this shit, but this is what I'm on now. Let me just say this: Am I tripping? Because, and I'm not saying what Future do or what he don't do, but it's a little more understandable. Not that it makes it right, but it's a little more understandable when somebody's broadcasting this shit and they're making the dollar off of it somewhere on the back end. It's an endorsement, it's a check. So, you know what I'm saying? This, this drug or whatever, you might have some stake in it or something. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But is it just me that it's worse if you don't have a stake in it and you don't do this, but this is what your music about? Who? But who's saying that he don't no, do no, it? No, no, no. That's what I said in the beginning to, to clarify. I'm not that's saying Future does or doesn't i don't know what that man do i just know what he says he do i don't believe half these rappers so all i'm saying is a rapper let's just take future out of it a mm-hmm. rapper oh yeah. yeah ain't that like yeah because yeah yeah and yeah that, that's the issue and you can even look at another sense what Lil Mo said as far as when she was popping pills and doing drugs she didn't do it around nobody so you look at somebody that is glorifying taking drugs and doing all this and somebody that was an addict but 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 did it around herself because she didn't want that that, that because because of that image, you know what I'm saying? It's to the point where like I said, it's just like <laughs> like one one of the main things that I took out of her like because like I said it, for about almost two hours it was a lot of gems that was dropped. it was a lot of things that I learned and I didn't even listen to the whole thing but just from mm-hmm. her working with so many artists and just oh, how man. a lot of things pound but but bro Legend. as far as what. With with the pills and all that, mm-hmm. her uh, having five kids, I forgot what the name was, but but the way she had the five kids, yeah, pretty much cutting her some pretty yeah, much she has a surgical procedure every time because she didn't want to go through the contractions and all that, yeah, to the point where they was pres- they was pre- prescribing her with this, yeah, Is that the man, yep, ooh, 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 yeah. yep, you know what I'm saying? So just just that, and then just like she said, like, well, this is the like it's so it, I I be having to humble myself because. Y'all told me this as far as like when you get when you get the money and what comes along with it and shit change. It's it's so crazy hearing it come out of her and mouth that she that she's saying yeah. that this is what everybody is doing. Yeah. And I be telling myself like I'm not, I'm not that weak minded. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I but hearing her thing. like, well, this is what everybody was doing. Yeah. To the point where even doing her radio show, I'm going in there at three o'clock in the morning and I'm high as a kite. Yeah. But I'm high. telling myself I'm the best out here doing it. And she said, she said that, that that they have people calling in complaining about it. <laughs> yeah, you know? crazy. Yeah. yeah, like crazy that it gets to that point. Yeah, but yeah. That's that's the, bro. This is good shit, man. Yeah, that, like that's, that's, crazy. that's good shit though. Like we, yeah. This content has has been amazing today. But what yeah, was what like, was the it, 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 it was something else though, right? With her, what did that? As, as she said, as far as the yeah, and then she something that that was groundbreaking mm. when she said, yeah, everybody's doing. She's like. Gospel artists, so you know, addicted to op- opioids, and and they're doing them. She's like, it's a few of them. Like casually said it. She casually said it, but I thought like that was like poof, to me. I she did like, it smooth. Didn't she name drop, did but she but didn't name but drop like, like oh like yeah yeah I don't know like yeah like gospel singers are doing it so. My only message in even mentioning that mm-hmm. is to just be careful because we get so caught up. In people's image and what they're doing and their status, and we automatically give them a pass. We mm-hmm. automatically think they're on, on a straight and narrow. Like people had a a fit and a heart attack when Kirk Franklin cussed his son out. Like, did you think he wasn't normal on the other side? Hey. Yeah, did you think he? Well, you probably thought he wasn't saying those words. But like, this is this is what I'm saying. You automatically line people up, yeah. and you put them in that box, and you on the other side when that camera's off and that well, mic is say? off. People go through stuff. People go through stuff. Like, y'all be amazed at what I'm about to say when I turn this mic off. <laughs> like, well, maybe not, but <laughs> no, shit. Yeah, I'm going to cuss somebody out. My dog broke my cord. I cussed him out. Yeah. I cussed him yeah. out like he was a human. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like, but that, that goes back to as far as that, that, as far as being influenced by that, that image that you see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people are not, and not, not saying that doing drugs are normal and glorified because. 
I joked with you told you that I think Kurt Franklin on something. You know what I'm saying? But just saying that at the end of that, people people are normal. You guys said with Kurt Franklin, hey, because I can name you like and Kurt Franklin, not even a, a pastor. He 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 preaches the gospel word in in, in the form of uh, of music. You got yeah. actual. Like, I know some pastors. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But the outside of the church that are just normal people. Yeah. But people are so brainwashed to the fact that you're this and you're supposed to do this. The point where people almost look at you either less or more of a human. Like, fam, I'm just like you. It's just what I do in life is just this. Yeah. What you do in life is that. Is that, right. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. But we automatically assume that they got to walk the straight and narrow and the minute that they do something that we don't deem to be Normal for a pastor. Right, motherfucker, you sin every fucking day. Yeah. As soon as straight, I straight up, <laughs> so, I, I was like, as soon, soon as I want to hit the blunt, y'all motherfucker <laughs> look at me like, oh, that's not God's child, man. Yeah, I lost that. I picked this weed ago. myself. Hey, right. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I'm gonna roll this <laughs> and his leaf. <laughs> I picked this in the day with the Lord. The leaves are from the earth, baby. Kirk Franklin ain't fucking with you. I mean, ooh. Nah, it's <laughs> Kirk hey, Franklin ain't playing with you. Hey, hey. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk, hey. I, th- I think, I think, I don't know. I told you, Kirk was the first person I thought about when she was like, eh, we, we, I think we all done had a thought. Like, man, Kirk Franklin on some shit. I told y'all a long time ago, Kirk Franklin was going to cuss. I said it, he was going to cuss in the live show. Think about back on the podcast. I told y'all. I said, he going to get out there and feel his stuff. Be like, put your motherfucking oh, I'm sorry. Put your, put your hands up. I told y'all a long time ago. Man. Kirk was going to cuss. He, he, he had too much energy, man. But, but that was that was some groundbreaking stuff, man. I thought mm. that was something that was eye-opening that people should look at. Because, you know, just stop holding these people. Stop worshiping these people. Mm-hmm. If you follow them, it's cool. Follow them for what they are. But... Don't expect them to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, man. Which goes back to trying to be happy 24 hours a day. It's not possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not. You can have some good days, but, you know, stop aiming for that, man. If you aim for the, the middle, man, you have a great life. This is my opinion. I'm no psychologist. I agree with you, bro. You know, it's it just, just trying to be, you know, trying to be real is what we do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, on to that, man. On to the next. Because, yeah, that, that was... Great conversation. I love yeah, that. Shit, man. We still rolling. We got some more. We still rolling. Let's, let's, hey. I, I got a story. I'm going to tell you. I'm showing your that. ass today, yeah, podcasting. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't fucking around. I got somebody that we're going to call. We're going to call one of our um, proud brothers and, and sponsors. Did you give him a shirt? He's going to check in with him. You ain't had no merch. I didn't have it with me when we, because um, I didn't know he was going to be there. Mm-hmm. So we kind of met up. He definitely asked me too. But yeah, we. we we gonna lean on into this. Hello. Oh, my brother, how you feeling today, my brother, my brother, my brother. I'm doing excellent, man. Yo, yo. yo. You said, oh, you thought I want no answer? <laughs> no, I said, oh, because it's always an enjoyment to hear your voice, my brother. And in case y'all didn't know who this is, this is the proud sponsor and partner, and my brother personally, Antoine Pope, coming to the show to join us, man. We we sorry we hit you at the last minute, man. I know it wasn't planned. I know, but we give you a round of applause. What's up, brother? Let's do. What's up, what's up, Blam? How y'all doing? I heard you was around my neck of the woods not too long ago. Hey, you know what? I was, JP, but you was grinding, I was grinding, and yes, was sir. grinding, so. That was a fact. Hey, listen, listen. On the 26th, I'll be in your neck of the woods again, but I'll be all the way there. Okay, okay. Hey, I got a question uh, for you. Okay. Live on the podcast. Oh, I like so, that. You be here on the 26th, so does that mean that that episode, we will get you live? On the podcast, uh, I, I want you tell me what time y'all are shooting. I'll make sure. Well, my my flight. I'll make sure my flight is early enough that I can make it. Let's see. So 26th. the twenty sixth is on a Monday. So it's a Monday. Yeah. So the 26th will is you a be just? Oh, so will, will you be? Uh, how long will you be out here for? Seven days. I'll be there to August second. Oh yeah, oh, so yeah. he so can make that. We can have you that 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 following week on the thirty. Well, even if we got a. Move the day around everything, but that right. that that following weekend we can schedule to have you, you know what I'm saying, be on the podcast. I know you probably got some planned planned out for that weekend, but you know what I'm saying. We can most definitely work something out and and, and, and get you in for that episode. Damn, whatever, perfect. whatever. What well, y'all That's tell perfect. me what's happened? I think the week after that though, 
uh, if I believe, I, I, I think Anthony, I think we talked about it. I think the week after that, we had some guys in, in Chicago land doing a, uh, a photo shoot and a chase in a bag shirt. Yes, sir. I, yeah. I believe, I believe, I believe it's the, the next day, actually the next week after I come back. So the week of the second, that weekend, well, I think I booked the photographer already. Yes, sir. So chasing the bag will uh, be official. And let's shout out. Hey, can we shout out real quick to chasing the bag, man? Chasing the bag responsibly, man. Look, my, my man's put in work. It's look, a look, look over here. It is you a movement. You got the t-shirt shit. I'm sorry, Twan. I'm showing them the little logo right now. Yeah, it's a movement, man. It is. This is not just something we talking about. This is a movement, man. If you ain't chasing the oh, bag, man. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, listen. Hey, chasing the bag is so so real that if you're not doing that right now, you're not even you're not even you just existing. You're not living. You're not thriving. You're not doing nothing. You're just saying the thing, right? And you know you you you, you know what idle idle people do, right? Yes, sir. They pair they pair by the wayside. And they get them out the work. The society get them out the way. So somebody else that's chasing it for real, mm -hmm. you yep. get that slot. You, you yep. feel me? One hundred percent. What you, what you what are you got? I, obviously, I'm driving a Atlanta right now. But what what are you guys talking about today? What, 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 what's happening? Man, we just had uh, 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 oh, we had a hell of a conversation that just just went down. But I don't even want to involve you in that because that might that might take us into something else. But what I wanted to do is dive into your mind because if the people don't know, we've just you know we've had a couple conversations and and we're we're launching um, the new segment. With, with with you weekly on the podcast and like you know this is not official but some things that ran through my mind was addressing the elephant in the room or the elephant in the room segment absolutely yeah. it, it, there are some things that need to be addressed like in the world like that they, they pick their favorites so I, I think ladies before it, it, you know you guys have proclaimed it and I, I love this by the way, you guys are the most diverse podcast in the world. Appreciate and, that, bro. Love it. And, 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 and there's no other podcast in the world that can <laughs> that, that can that can do this, man. Address the elephant in the room. I think I think it's a thing in hip hop and sports, um, especially hip hop and sports that needs to be addressed, and, and people just. Don't give. I don't know for what reason or another they just don't give credit what credit can do, yeah. um, or that they that you people get to a certain st a status and they feel like they can't be touched. I I don't. I, I'm not cut from that club. I think everybody can be touched. I think it should be talked about. I believe if Ladies Before Eleven podcast address it, I think more you'll see more people come out and be like, oh yeah, I thought that too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I thought that too. That's right. That's never been. That's never been said. So I ain't gonna go into what we what the specifics of what we talked talked about. Yeah, but next week lunch. I, I, I believe. I, like I know that. when I mentioned it to him. I, like I know when I mentioned it to you. Like, whoa, that's 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 dope. You, yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm not going to argue. Like, I just, all I can do is do my homework Look. and try to, you know what I'm saying? I got to, I got to have my shield. And so when you come swinging that sword, I got to have my shield or I got to, you know, get on the side with you. Hey, you know? hey my goofy ass <laughs> over here thinking, shit, dang, you need a job. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody said, hey, 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 he, man, he I, just said more in one little statement <laughs> than motherfuckers said. I ain't even go. <laughs> Y'all nuts, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. I like that though. This is my. It's, hey, hey. This is all I love. That this is like I said. We. This is the um, most diverse. We give you the raw. Like this is the first time I'm hearing about this, and then y'all hearing about this this segment. And I, I, I love it. Yeah, I you think it's gonna be dope, yeah. man. You know, I'm, hey. I'm glad. I'm glad you love it, JP. I, well, honestly, when I was thinking about this, I, I thought about it as something that you would tackle. Like yeah. you, 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 you like for some reason you, you. I, there's only one episode that I've seen where you straddle the fence. Normally, you take a position and you stick and He's you go it. in on it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But for, for the most part, JP, you do your thing. When you, when you take a position, you stick. You stand it. You stand yeah, it right. It's, it's hard through, to move them. And do two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Well, if you, when we when you being around uh, Tom, damn near twenty four seven. 
<laughs> that shit starts to rub off. <laughs> see, he 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 knows how to hide it, so you probably won't even see it as much of him. But yeah, that shit rubs off on me. <laughs> Hey, I bend a little oh, bit. I be, man, I be trying wild. to see it, man. But what you getting into these days, man? I, I know we we had a, a conversation before, and I know we was talking about what what's going on with the the, the life insurance, man. That's a that's a message I think we should put out there, you know, real quick. Oh man, you know what? Um, you know, for for people that for your audience that uh, they probably know me as the, the stock market guy. But but the Maya Raw Group is a financial education company, so we divil and dab and make sure people understand that there's many other ways to secure and wealth, to uh, make sure you but your, your legacy is protected. And so we jump, we hopped in the, the life insurance game, and to be more precise, we got into the people that are being denied life insurance, like people that or. or uh, people that's forty years old to eighty five, right? Mm-hmm. These these people need these people are, who need insurance. These people we should be on their radar, right? Right. Also, what about criminals? They go to jail and get a felony. Nobody gonna touch them. Well, mm. our company specializes in that. We let them know that no, you can get insurance. And and, and the greatest thing about what we're doing is we partner with the big boys, AIG, Aetna. Uh, John Hancock, Panthers. I can I can go on all day. Oh, I see yeah. big heavy hitters. I can go on all day, and, and these these carriers or these particular insurance brokers, you know, they really want to insure people. They they right. they. But you think it? Our people thinking off the old printers and what we some regurgitated information from nineteen ninety, and right, and we still carrying it on two thousand twenty one. But with the Maya Raw Group, we want to let people know no. You can actually get you some insurance for a little or nothing and protect yourself, right? right. Protect yourself. Um, but life insurance, man, that this game, for people don't know, man, people, especially what time it is right now with this pandemic, and it's not going away, by the way, for people that believe that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, talking uh, about that. But, but, but you, we want to, you know, people just want to be, be cautious and, and be be. Uh, aware, you know, just be aware that it, it's out there, right? Mm-hmm. No, that's fine. But life insurance is needed, and we all know. Uh, I like to say this: I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here. We protect our. We we insure our cars. We insure our apartment. We insure our ring. We insure a lot of things. But why is the last thing that we insure is our the most important thing is our life? Uh, yeah. You know what's crazy? Yeah. And right, I, I, and I'm I'm sorry to even cut you off, but I, I got a, a quick story to tell y'all as far as life insurance. The first okay. time, the first time that um, I think I was maybe 22, mm-hmm. was could even consider even taking out a policy for life insurance. Now, granted, I was dealing with somebody that was I think she was 33. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh-huh. This was old girl that me and bro got into. Over. But, so, but so the policy, you know what I'm saying? Dude came over and talked to us, and I didn't realize until afterwards that it was a policy pretty much. I, when I was looking at how things panned out, there was a policy set up for me to. Well, if shit, if shit go down, well, I, I got you. Twice. You know what I'm saying? Just, I'm, 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 co- I'm co signing. And what you know what's funny? I realized after that. Less seasoning on the food. <laughs> Less <laughs> shit, shit. That's just gonna drive me crazy to probably want to do something. Like so. <laughs> Twice she, she, she was setting them up. She's about to ask. Him. I know, but I mean that's that's just something. It was it, that's, that's a true story, but that's just something fun because that was like first thing. I, first time I ever even thought about life insurance, like especially somebody when you're young. Yeah, that's, that's the last thing that you think about. Yeah. So now hey, I, I got, can, I, can I tell a quick 30s. story? No, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Can I tell a quick story? That this Absolutely. is this was live. This this is this is a real life. This story happened less six days ago. All right. So I, I I sent out a text to to a bunch of people, letting them know that hey man, we doing life insurance now. And a young a fellow a fellow that I know, he's like an uncle of mine because he stayed on the same street as I grew up on down the street and he replied to me man 
Hey, thanks, nephew. I got insurance on my kids and grandkids. I'm looking at the phone like, okay, you got insurance on your kids and grandkids. That's cool. If one of them dies. Right. But I, I, I hit him with this question. I said, what about you? Oh, my gosh. Oh. I said, do you have insurance on you for them? Silence. Right? Mm. Silence. But I'm persistent. I, 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 I got a collection background. So I'm persistent. So I, I'm like, uh, hey, man, you get that last message? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Somebody got it. Right. <laughs> you so get it. so you, know it. What I had to, you know what I had to do, man? Because I was trying to get it. I was trying to get him to text it. He didn't text it. I kept, I kept FaceTiming him. FaceTime and I'm FaceTime back to back to back. He finally picked the phone and said, man, nephew, I ain't got no insurance on myself. But, but, but uh, the point I'm making is, the point I'm making in all this is, people try to get past this life insurance thing, this thing that's detrimental to everyone's life, mm-hmm. any way they can. Right. And, they, and people, people have no value for themselves. Yeah. Right? They have the, the people put no they 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 put they put like they put insurance on all these things they think to have value. Yep. But people have no value in themselves and they don't know what their self worth is. So they it's easy for them not to put life insurance on themselves. Yep. I agree. It, man. It, it, and and, and, and uh, this 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 will open up another can of worms. And th- this proves that how selfish people really are. Hmm. Even they, think about they, that. It, 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 it's evident. <laughs> it is very, but it, but it just goes to show that the mind state, like where where people have placed their values, we we keep placing our values in the wrong place. But get it. Think about how many people there are that's out here telling you what you should be doing. You see it every single day. Now the stocks is the hottest thing. You, you see people telling you how to invest, 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 invest. Why don't you turn on your TV and you don't, why don't you see people doing the same thing and going as hard and making life insurance cool? You know why? Because it's, a, I don't even know the numbers. I want to say billion, but I'm just saying that at the rate that people are dying, it only benefits those people who are, you know what I'm saying? In, in control of that. I mean, more, and i say that as far as, don't get me wrong, funeral homes and morticians, they're going to get their money either way. Whether you come in there with insurance or not, you got to pay, right? But right. why is it not marketed as much to have some type of life insurance on yourself? Like, why are we not making that cool? You, we're making everything else cool. And, and I think for one... It, it, uh, it's, it's, it's simple, though, and you know the answer to that. I know the it's answer, simple. but I'm, I'm putting it out there. Anything, anything that, that, that progresses a society or, or, or a, a specific people is not is not going to be highlighted. Anything right. that's beneficial, anything that's beneficial for not only for this time but the time after that to give somebody a leg up, that's not that's frowned upon in America. Mm-hmm. That ain't that that's not glorified. Not you know, you, you 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 hey listen, you shout you shout loud enough they're gonna come and put one in you. Facts. <laughs> yep. That's a, we've seen it happen too many times. You get a game up loud enough, they're going to come and put one in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but again, man, only thing we can do is use our platform and use what we learn it and, 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 and put it out there. Right? Mm. And, nice. and, hope, and hope one or two people grab it. That's it, man. Right? That's it. I don't care if it's 10 people. That's that's enough to know that I I made an impact in somebody's life is good enough for me. And that's why we do this thing. That's why you do what you do. That's why we do what we do outside of our everyday grind. We decide to grind for the free. Like, that's what people don't understand for the free. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're grinding for the free. (laughs) We're grinding for the free. Mm-hmm. To to you know to put messages out there to drop gems to give people knowledge and information that they wouldn't be privy to anywhere else. Yeah, you know, and that's that's just what we do. And man, now let me let me just say first and foremost because this is a sensitive subject for me because 
rest in peace to moms you know love you to death man never forgotten because this was something that she always preached about always and i'm talking about since we were younger always so don't leave here it, it costs to come in this world it costs to go out that that was her thing and she always said that have something you know don't leave people with the burden of 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 your debt and burying you and, and trying to take care of your situation so yeah Twan, i appreciate that man that that's a message that i want to i want to continue to touch on we're not done with it here like i said you you family so you you here you done got yourself into something man yeah because the next time i talk to you and i'm gonna leave with this question i want i want you to answer it when you get back on with us is that how can we make this more comfortable how can we normalize this to the younger crowd to take action in this because the first thing you think about was life insurance is death and that scares people away from even trying to even think about that to the point where once it actually happens it's too late yeah yeah so when we get back hey and this is hey well next week because we got the next little yeah, segment I, I, I want a good answer for that because like I said I'm speaking on the younger crowd, even the cat, even the kids that's younger than me, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I can try to spread that out to them as far as with the knowledge that I probably can't even get to them. Absolutely, but you, but you can now because we're building, and yeah. a lot of the rules we make, like you know, there's no rules to making shit cool. You know, it's just mm -hmm. about getting the message out. So it's how you feel, like you know, you want to do it. So yeah, that I'm, shit, they just as much as they make. Taking drugs and popping yeah. pills and shit cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which way we just talked about. <laughs> yeah. Facts. If y'all can make that cool, man. Like, yeah. Twan, you still with us? Maybe. <laughs> nah, he, he might hit a dead spot because he's definitely probably in the well, mountains. <laughs> he, well, he most definitely going to go hear that. Gonna hear this and yeah. Well, Twan, we, are, we definitely appreciate yes, you, sir. Fam. We definitely do. We, we looking forward to this new segment, man. Elephant in the room. Forgive me if I'm speaking too soon. That was something that came up in my head, so I thought it would be great because he said, why ain't people talking about this? So that's the elephant in the room to me. So shout out to Twan, man, and, and all that he's doing and, and Mr. Pope becoming a part of this a part of this podcast weekly, man. We thank you, and we will get back to, to you and this segment, man, coming up next week. So be looking out for that, man. That That's something we're going to be doing. So mm -hmm. now to close this thing out, man, um, First and foremost, I want to say mm. thank you, man. This, this has been a great podcast. I want to say thank you, yeah. to, thank you to. Um, feel like we 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 gave a little too much. You want to? I know. It be, yeah, Ooh, we feel we. like that, man. We we got some people on here that I, drop I like knowledge it, on top of knowledge, like gems on top of gems, man. This is the ladies' free podcast, and that's what we do, Tom. man. Shout out to the guests. Tom. I mean, we, we have some some people, yeah, come on here and speak and get some good, yeah. yeah. And I, knowledge, a and different I angle them in. Yeah. I snuck them in. This you is did. not planned, and they will cuss me out with throwing them on the podcast like that yeah. to spare the moment. But I feel like that's a good way to get a raw reaction, mm -hmm. especially with us talking about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that that's definitely dope, man. And mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to everybody who has rocked with the podcast, who has Die. come, you know, <laughs> who has come along with us. Everybody who has. You know, just been on this journey with us, man. I want to thank y'all. Thank y'all, man. Let me give y'all a little music, man. I want to just thank everybody, man. Hey. Thank everybody who rock with us. Rock with us. Thanks to everybody, man. Our sponsor, uh, Mayor Roth Group, Antoine and the gang, man. Thank y'all, man. Can I thank y'all for rocking with us. Yeah, I just yeah. want to say one thing. Thanks to the family, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought about when we were talking with Twan, but man, just sitting here Should thinking. Hmm? Should I get that? I thought that was maybe DoorDash or something. I don't know. I'm sorry. No, no, you know, hey, hey. She looked like she had something that she wasn't going to leave. More work for you to edit. Right. Oh, so you ain't talking no more? Mm -mm. Oh, I thought you were still talking. I guess I got to bring this in here. Oh, yeah, man. Say, if you're right. What's that? Oh, that's some fruit. Yep. Oh, shoot. Guess this is for me. 
Oh, check you out, brother. Ah, man. Well, I'm over here. I, I done stopped talking. Like, okay, this is an edit oh, point. Man, let me, let me. I, I guess it's not an edit point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set this right here. Oh. I just want to give the people a nice little look. That's what's up, that man. That was going on. I, I wasn't expecting that. Hey, who, who, who that from? My baby told me to get the host. Oh, yeah. She hooked the boy up. Oh, man. That was... I had to get that. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Um... How ironic <laughs> that one of the people that we just got off the line was a guest on the podcast. Shout out to my sister. Thank you, Renita, for the edible oh, arrangements okay. that she sent. Um, yeah, for my anniversary, sure. 18 year anniversary, she sent the edible arrangement. Oh, yeah, round of applause, man. Super was... dope, man. That is super dope. I, I wasn't expecting that. That just happened out of nowhere, right? <laughs> like, I was not expecting that. So, thank you to my yeah, sister. Thank up. you, Tyson and Renita. Thank y'all, man. I, like, I appreciate it. I like chocolate club and straw, man. Yeah, we gonna, we gonna dig into that. <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, yeah, special shout out to sis. Uh, I was just saying, this was lit, well, I don't know why, but coming up in my head when Tom was talking, just thinking about, like, man, just a couple, it was just over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, didn't even, never had this in my mind to even be doing nothing like this. Mm-hmm. Nothing at all. Like we're, we're rather it, it the uh it was brought from you and it, it came like bro, I'm I, I probably had some other things that I was probably thinking about doing. But to me, this is something that never even thought about doing, but I actually enjoy doing on a weekly basis. Like, man, I mean it's just I love it. Yeah. So if you do you know, you're doing something that you that you like to do and then you grind and you work hard for it, eventually it's gonna pay off. And when it pays off, that that's 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 that's, that's the greatness right there. That is, and I'm a, I'm gonna say this, and I ain't trying to shit on nobody, and I ain't trying to down nobody. But if you didn't learn something about yourself or something that you learned to do during this mm-hmm. pandemic period, yeah, shame on you. You need some, some counseling, <laughs> something. Some. You got to dig deeper, man, because I mean, things come out that if with all this time that we had. You had to figure out something, man. Something. And you you know what? It might have just popped up by accident. But just look into it, man. That's all I'm saying. I'm not shitting on nobody because, yeah. hey, I got enough stuff in this brain. And before, <laughs> before we go, I want to leave y'all with this story, man. This is something. And, and you know, this. It, let, me, let me just be clear. Let me be clear. This is definitely a black first podcast. Mm-hmm. Yes, because we share black stories and, and we share information to our black people. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that we're not allowing nobody else in. I have plenty of friends that are white, Hispanic, mm-hmm. Asian, everything. I, I, I got more of them than black yeah, friends. <laughs> exactly. Like we got a lot of people that we rock with. So I don't ever want the, you know, to come across that we're just strictly. No, we're black first. Yes. You know what I'm but saying, but that's as far as diverse. Yes, like when we, and well, that's you, you where the every from. every week. Yeah, it's the most diverse. We the most diverse podcast anywhere because there's a lot of people that are white, Hispanic, um, Asian, any whatever that can relate to this information that we're giving. Just because sometimes people are white, we automatically give them that privilege. There's some white people that don't have that privilege. I mean, they may have it on the outside, but I'm just saying they're not in a position. To where there are, you know, they're not rich. And not every white person, not every other race is rich. Yeah. So I say that to say this. I got some dope white friends. <laughs> and I'm going to share a story with y'all about one of them before we get out of here. And I don't want you to stop me. <laughs> Just right. let me say this. And I hope he don't kill me. I'm not going to say his name. But one of my guys, man, he said he, he had an issue. And this was, um, I was in management. And he didn't directly work under me, but he came to me for for guidance. You know, he was a different department, but still came to me. So we was cool and we was talking and he had a job that he had to do. That required him to go to another state. It wasn't nothing that he did regularly, but this particular week and he was leaving and he was going to drive. And I was like, you're not going to fly. He said, no, I'm going to drive. It's cool. So I was like, okay, so. My man left the job and he said, hey, I'm going to leave out at this certain time. And I said, cool. I'll just keep everything updated, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So things ended up changing on him. And when they changed, he ended up, he was like "Ah, probably two hours out already into like a six hour drive. And they changed the dates on him. And so he had to come back. So in doing that, 
my man came back home, pissed off. <laughs> and when he got home, his girl that he has two kids with, he walked in and she was sitting on the lap of another dude, right? And I'm not, I'm laughing, but it's, it's not funny, but I'm laughing. Y'all figure that out later. But I'm, I'm laughing because just the, the scenario. So when he walks in, he sees her sitting on dude's lap. And so they having a good time. They drinking and he's like, what the fuck? Like he walked in, what the fuck is going on? And so she, she jumps up and she says, no, it's not what you think. And he like, what What do you mean it's not what I think? Like, I leave home and just so happen, I come back. If I had, you know, if they hadn't canceled this, God knows what would be going on right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so she said, no, somebody died in his family and he just needed some consoling. And this <laughs> is so. Mm. So with all that being said, I almost said his name. He said, you know what? He looked at me, bro. When I tell you, he looked at me with a, a look of a killer. He said, do you know what? After she told me all that, he he said, I looked at her and I said, I said, but I'm asking him like, bro, what, what about him? Like, what is he doing in all this? Like, I know she jumped up to tell you this, but what is he doing? He rubbing on that thigh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Outside of rubbing on that thigh. What is he doing and saying at this point? He said, I looked at her and I said, you're sitting in here with him. And you're drinking my fucking beer, buddy. Like, <laughs> out of all the shit that's going on, how did we get to the beer? Hey, <laughs> don't fuck. Or what? There's two things you don't fuck with. You don't fuck with a white person, and you don't fuck with their beer. <laughs> you, you're right. I, I, I could not figure out your, your lady is in here sitting on another man's lap. Hey man, and, man. and of all things you could think to, to go off about, he said, you're sitting on his lap holding my fucking beer. That's what he said. And my, and I'm holding my fucking woman. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even care about it. Oh, I'm gonna say his name again. I said, my boy is a G. <laughs> he is a G. <laughs> you, you, you got the beer out of him. Shout out to my man. I almost said his I'm name like four times Christmas during this story, beer. man. <laughs> I don't know what kind of beer he was drinking. That yeah, that beer must have been like eighty dollars a case. Like, I don't know, but <laughs> man, <that's, laughs> should have seen the face you made. You said hey, that. I'm hoping that my voice impression didn't give away. But I mean, it is what it is. Like I didn't say his name, so he'll know. But people oh, around us will know. But yeah, <laughs> my man, I just had to like that. Just brought me into that man. I don't even want to keep going on. You got anything on that? <laughs> I think we both said enough, man. Thank you to everybody, man. Tell me, don't say nothing. I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> it's been a hell of a podcast, man. I want to thank y'all, man. The energy is amazing in here, man. Thank y'all for that. Thank you to my sister for the edible arrangements. Thank you to everybody for rocking with us and the guests Shout who out to jumped the guests. on today, man. Twine, Renita. Renita, nine. Nah, yes, thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. Toast to you, brother, to close this out. Appreciate y'all, man. man. We'll be back next week.